All right, you read the title of the video. You already know what we're doing today. I hope you're ready to delve into the world of aesthetics. And if you're not sure what an aesthetic is, let's go ahead and break it down real quick. In its simplest form, aesthetics refers to the principles and philosophy of beauty and taste. It encompasses the way in which we perceive, interpret, and appreciate beauty in various forms, whether it's in media, art, fashion, design, or even nature. Here's the interesting part. Each and every person on this planet has an aesthetic, whether you realize it or not. Whether you intentionally go out of your way to embrace it or not, you have an aesthetic. If you find yourself drawn to a particular style of clothing, if you meticulously curate your Instagram or Pinterest feed to reflect a certain vibe, or even if you spend hours rearranging your room to create a perfect ambience. Congratulations, you have an aesthetic. It's a common thread that runs through our lives, influencing the way we present ourselves to the world and the environments that we choose to inhabit. So yeah, I've got two icebergs today. It's a lot, and we're just gonna go through both of them, and uh, yeah gonna be fun as you know the deeper we go the more obscure and weird i guess some of these topics may seem but uh yeah let's go ahead and uh get right into it so first off we're starting in tier one of the first iceberg and we have visco now visco is a family of aesthetics named in reference to a photography app called visco created in 2011 it gained prominence with its in-app suite of features that allow users to edit with the preset filters and tools and since its rise in popularity the Visco aesthetics have rolled over into other platforms. Now, there's two main ones, Visco Girls, that is kind of like a subculture that did not originate on the app, but the two are kind of related. Visco Girls often use the phrases, and I oop, or God damn it. Hi, you must be new. Yeah, this is a new Hydro Flask. Oh, you don't have one? And the fashion is often described as preppy but laid back and they're associated with hydro flasks, polaroid cameras, tiktok, and the save the turtles movement. There's also the visco boy which is an aesthetic that involves a person, preferably male, who uses the app visco and they're literally the male counterpart to visco girls or an ideal visco boyfriend. Alright our next aesthetic is b-boys and e-girls. Now e-girls and b-boys are e-boys sometimes collectively known as e-kids are a youth subculture of gen z that emerged in the late 2010s notably popularized by the video sharing application tiktok it is an evolution of emo seen in mall goth fashion combined with japanese street fashion and korean street fashion videos by e-girls and e-boys tend to be flirtatious and many times overtly sexual they include eye rolling and protruding tongues additionally fictional characters such as ramona flowers harley quinn and sailor moon were influential on the development of the subculture all right our next aesthetic is vaporwave and vaporwave is a music genre branching from electronic hypnagogic pop which was what much of its music was labeled as before the term vaporwave was coined but the unique and iconic visual aesthetic cultivated alongside it is now debatably more popular than the music itself. Vaporwave as an aesthetic and movement has been described as a tongue-in-cheek commentary on the late 20th century consumerism and soulless glamour of late stage capitalism. Vaporwave, like many other aesthetics, is meant to give you a sense of nostalgia. Even if you weren't around from the late 70s to early 2000s, both the images and music send you to a whole different version of the world world we know today. Images associated with Vaporwave are often related to the late 1980s and early 1990s, but can include as far back as the late 1970s, or the beginning of mall culture, and to circa 2006, which was the peak of Windows XP usage. And it uses its captivating images and visuals of environments evocative of modern childhoods spent with mothers or teenage friends in colorful or eye-catching shopping environments, as well as reminders of the early days of personal computing technology and the internet. All right, our next aesthetic is soft boys and soft girls and in general softy is a description word describing a group of similar aesthetics dedicated to going as far as cutesy of a look as possible while still maintaining a casual mature look that separates it from similar styles this aesthetic 
aesthetic is a trifecta of TikTok aesthetics alongside Visco and E People. And starting off with Soft Girl, it's a fashion style based on a deliberately cutesy feminine look and has become incredibly popular on TikTok. And Soft Boys are the male equivalent of the Soft Girl. They are boys who are unafraid of showing off their sensitive and artistic sides with the clothing that they choose to wear. And they have become one of the more known male aesthetics, despite their female counterparts being more popular. However, soft boys have a quite negative reputation related to the fact that some soft boys fake their soft sides. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, our next aesthetic is goth, and goth is a music-based subculture that was formed in the mid-1970s to early 1980s in the UK. Gothic rock originally derived from the post-punk movement at the time, and goth was a term originally used by music journalists to describe bands with dark subjects. Goth as a concrete music genre didn't exist until the release of the British band Bauhaus debut single, Bella Lugosi's Dead, and the 80s goth slash post-punk scene reverberated around the world as far and wide as America's death rock and Japan's pre-goth rock and it only continued and still continues to grow in its influence. Today, goth still thrives as an underground subculture with many organized events and festivals and funnily enough, it is one of the four high school stereotypes popularly used to classify students along with jock, nerd, and preppy. Alright, our next aesthetic is emo, and emo is a slang term used to describe a subculture which is somewhat derived from the hardcore punk scene. The usage of the term has evolved dramatically over the years, and therefore the definition of the term emo can vary. Emo often somewhat overlaps with other subcultures visually such as goth due to dealing with negative emotions as its major topic, and common motifs also include broken hearts, skulls, guns, splatters, and music notes. Many members of this subculture will also spot various body mods, the most popular ones being stretched earlobes, facial piercings, and tattoos, and the hair is usually kept long regardless of gender and features sideswept bangs and choppy layers usually dyed in a deep black color. And it kind of boils down to the emo aesthetic being all about expressing your emotions through dark and edgy fashion. All right, next up we got aesthetics based on color. And yeah, you, are, you can use color theory to find your own aesthetic. I'm not a fucking expert at this, but like from what I found, it's like, so like I could have an aesthetic based on, on purple, I guess, you know, or if your favorite color is like blue or pink, you can have a, a pink aesthetic or a blue aesthetic. However, there are also like other specific aesthetics that you may like based on your favorite color. For example, if your favorite color is blue, you might like the sea punk aesthetic. Or if your favorite color is purple or pink, you might be into vaporwave. And yeah, that that's pretty like uh, spot on. It's kind of it's kind of sexy. If your favorite color is kind of like goldish or tan or or whatever you might be into angel core you know it, it's that type of stuff are you following me am i making sense here i don't know how long we're into this video but i hope we're making sense all right our next aesthetic is metal and metal is a term that encompasses a style of heavy aggressive music heavy metal was the culmination of acid rock heard in the late 1960s and the genre evolved further throughout the 1970s and 1980s when it first reached mainstream popularity now metal music is easy to notice as it includes loud guitars fast drumming and violent lyrics generally being the main components because of the sound it became a cause for panic by christian parents who believed the music to be satanic and a bad influence for children during the 80s. Despite the pushback, metal is still popular in many facets of music, including influencing genres such as grunge, new metal, and rap metal among many other subgenres and microgenres. And fans of metal are called headbangers or metalheads. Alright, our next aesthetic is punk, and punk is an aesthetic and subculture centered around the punk rock movement of the 1970s that followed in the footsteps of the hippie movement. While hippies were more about peace, love, and harmony, the punks were loud, abrasive, and went out of their way to do whatever they could to offend members of the status quo. Many preached for anarchism, far-left politics, and spinning in the face of the establishment by rejecting the prevailing capitalist philosophy. Punk has evolved over time to be a symbol of rebellion, whether small scale or large scale, and not all variants of punk are visually similar to the original 1970s American punk, but contain similar messages about potential for society's decline. 
and as we go on there's going to be aesthetics with the punk suffix that generally share an attitude of defiance and the rejection of mainstream society but there are some which are completely unrelated all right our next aesthetic is cosplay and cosplay or costume play is an activity and performance art in which participants called cosplayers wear costumes and fashion accessories to represent a specific character cosplayers often interact to create a subculture and the broader use of the term cosplay applies to any costume that role playing in venues apart from the stage sources from these cosplayers include anime cartoons comic books manga television series rock music performances video games in some other cases include original characters cosplay grew out of the practice of fans costuming at science fiction conventions and the japanese term cosplay was coined in 1984 a rapid growth in the number of people cosplaying as a hobby since the 1990s has made the phenomenon a significant aspect of popular culture in japan as well as in other parts of east asia and even the western world cosplay events are now common features of fan conventions and today there are dedicated conventions and competitions as well as social networks websites and other forms of media that are centered on cosplay activities all right our next aesthetic is hippie and hippie is a member of the counterculture of the 1960s originally a youth movement that began in the united states and spread to other countries around the world the word hippie came from the word hipster and was used to describe beatniks who moved into new york city's greenwich village and san francisco's and san francisco's height ashbury district while it faded out in the 1970s it has enjoyed occasional blips of popularity since the 1990s hippie fashion itself may draw on a lot of inspiration from the 1960s but there are some modern hippie clothing vendors one can buy that range from tie-dye clothing to clothing with sacred geometry on it to harem pants. It features bright colors and complex patterns such as paisley and often includes loose fitting baggy clothes and beaded jewelry. All right, our next aesthetic is common white girl and basic girl more known as basic white girl or common white girl is an aesthetic that originated in the early 2010s through people's point of view on the average teenage girls this basic girl tends to love starbucks or dunkin donuts wears ugg boots and yoga pants uh, has a sense of authenticity and a varying degree of shallowness this aesthetic was created through a negative view of popular trends seen mostly adopted by white teenagers and young adults and is often used to insult these demographics all right, our next aesthetic is tomboy and tomboy is a type of girl who exhibits characteristics or behavior considered typical of a boy common characteristics include wearing masculine clothing and engaging in games and activities that are physical in nature and considered in many cultures to be unfeminine or the domain of boys some tomboyish girls identify as part of the lgbtq community and are lesbian and or queer and tomboyism is often associated with butch slash stuff lesbianism and rejects traditional gender norms for girls and women who identify with a more masculine identity however you do not need to be lgbtq plus to be tomboyish as anybody of any background lifestyle and orientation can be tomboyish all right our next aesthetic is skater and skater is an aesthetic centered around skateboards graffiti fisheye lens and jeans skater usually consists of monotone muted colors or band t-shirts and uh yeah it's uh this one's a pretty simple one it's just skating man skating all right, our next aesthetic is fantasy and fantasy itself is a genre of fiction set in a fictional universe often inspired by real world and folklore its roots are in oral traditions which then became fantasy literature and drama fantasy itself often makes an appearance as epic fantasy inspired by the middle ages in europe however it can be inspired by various times and places common visual tropes of fantasy could include sunlit landscapes forests castles swords and daggers scrolls of parchments crystals gemstones old map potions poisons all that type of stuff dragons you know how it is all right our next aesthetic is furry and furries experience their fandom mainly through art of their own characters and others how these furry characters are depicted can differ vastly from artist to artist nonetheless in general most furry artists have a preference for bright happy colors often with pastel tones i think it goes in some situations it goes as far as creating a quote fursona and people even cosplay as their original created fursonas or characters 
All right, our next aesthetic is cyberpunk, and cyberpunk as a genre includes a wide variety of visual aesthetics, but is recognized by its encompassing theme of high-tech, low life. It became prominent in the 1980s, thanks to the work of authors like Philip K. Dick, J.G. Ballard, and William Gibson, as they examined the impact of drug culture, technology, and the sexual revolution while avoiding the utopian tendencies of earlier science fiction. Settings in the cyberpunk genre range from the richly neon-colored, rough around the edges urban jungles of Akira to the hyper-futuristic neon cityscapes and bleak wastelands of Blade Runner 2049. Cyberpunk narratives often incorporate a sense of hopelessness or nihilism typically featuring a gritty, violent backdrop with crime, artificial intelligence, class uprising, governmental and corporate corruption, anarchy, gang warfare, and transhumanism all being central themes. Alright, our next aesthetic is minimalism, and minimalism refers to a lack of clutter or unnecessary detail. It has a widespread influence ranging from the arts to lifestyle. As an art movement itself, minimalism began in post-World War II Western art and was prominent in the 1960s through the early 1970s. It's strongly influenced from the reductive aspects associated with parts of modernism, and the art movement has had a significant influence on minimalism as a lifestyle, which is rejection of consumers' trends. With with an emphasis on simple living. The lifestyle has become increasingly prominent since 2010 and is commonly associated with the minimalists. All right, our next aesthetic is Halloween. And yeah, Halloween, man, you, I mean, you know, Halloween, also known as the Night of Witches or Samhain in Celtic countries, is an aesthetic based on the holiday of the same name. Halloween visuals invoke images of vampires, skeletons, bats, witches, zombies, spiders, jack-o'-lanterns, ghosts, haunted buildings, abandoned buildings, and a creepy vibe. It's, it's, you know, it's Halloween. Alright, our next aesthetic is Christmas, and Christmas, also abbreviated as Xmas, is an aesthetic which celebrates the general idea of Christmas, the Christian celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. However, from the mid-19th century onwards, the aesthetic has distanced itself from the strictly religious imagery, and the day is celebrated in a mostly non-religious way. The visuals associated with Christmas originated from various cultural traditions, and it includes traditions associated with nostalgia, goodwill, family, tradition, and happiness. Alright, our next aesthetic is spring, and spring is an aesthetic that is focused around the season of the same name. At this time of the year, with the melting of winter snow, farmers begin to sow seed while flowers plant, and it alludes to elements such as rebirth, new beginnings, renewal, and a more hopeful, optimistic vibe after many, many months of cold. The aesthetics that revolve around spring are centered around motifs such as budding flowers, meadows, baby animals, sunshine, and a fresh and new feeling. Alright, our next aesthetic is summer. In summer, it's the hottest season of the year and an aesthetic that involves the season of the same name. It is widely considered one of the favorite seasons of many people, considering that is the vacation period of schools and many adults, attributing it to a more carefree, cheerful, and high energy spirit. Commonly associated with beaches as they are popular travel destinations on holidays, but also pools as they help with cooling off from the heat. Summer is also the perfect time for practicing outdoor or aquatic sports like swimming, surfing, volleyball, football, and cycling. It's a reason for refreshing drinks like iced tea, juices of any kind, coconut water, cold beers and martinis, and foods like exotic fruits, salads, popsicles, ice cream cream and grilled meat it's a summer bro all right our next aesthetic is autumn and autumn also known as fall is one of the four temperate seasons it includes popular aspects that are falling leaves pumpkins coats and harvest holidays it includes orange yellow red and brown leaves dark weather because of the shorter days warm spiced drinks warm clothing especially knitted garments holiday decorations like halloween thanksgiving harvest festivals etc and our next aesthetic and our last seasonal aesthetic is winter winter is the coldest season of the year in polar and temperate zones it involves snow sweaters the color white and the cold during this time of year people tend to stay more at their homes to not be exposed to low temperatures making the season be associated with more calm cozy elements some elements are staying at home near a fireplace wrapped around in a blanket watching a movie and reading books and winter is also closely tied to the holiday of christmas however winter isn't always a low energy time for everyone since it has various exclusive sports and activities that include sledding skiing ice skating hockey and snowball fights 
All right, our next aesthetic is Western, and Western is a popular genre inspired by the lives of early settlers of the American frontier. The aesthetic entails themes of self-reliance, solitude, and wildness. Western folklore often includes tales of lone vigilantes traveling the American frontier on horseback, more times than not armed with a six-shooter revolver or a rifle, prepared to dole out justice. Visually, the Western aesthetic shares many similarities with that of country, but places an emphasis on imagery of the historical Wild West, as well as motifs of vigilantism and adventure commonly depicted in Western popular films. Alright, our next aesthetic is indie, and indie is a broad aesthetic based on individuality. Its name comes from the word independent, and the indie aesthetic includes a variety of independent music genres including shoegaze. This can also include the indie movie genre, as many movies in the genre add to the original indie aesthetic. Photos in indie aesthetic often have sad text overlaid to further communicate the mood, and indie blogs often feature photos of ornate architectural structures, architectural spaces, snow-covered landscapes, and bruised skin. And photos may be low quality and grainy for the vintage look. Alright, next up we have anime. An anime or anime core is an aesthetic revolving around the visual culture of Japanese anime and manga, glorifying the various Japanese animation and comic art styles that have existed through the decades as well as their popular series and characters. It tends to overlap with other aesthetic genres like cartoon core, vaporwave, web core, cyberpunk, or scene. Commonly featured in this aesthetic are edits and gifs of scenes of popular anime, franchises or anime style music videos, photography of merch collections and rooms, and various various memes that exist within the anime fandom. All right, yeah, t that was tier one. We Holy shit, guys. Y'all are fucking awesome, bro. Moving on to tier two. Let's keep going. And the next aesthetic we're gonna be talking about is scene. And scene is a movement and subculture that started in the early 2000s out of the hardcore scene and became popular in the mid 2000s. Members of the original scene subculture were nicknamed scene kids, scene stars, or trendies. And scene is often confused with or used interchangeably with emo. It's precursor subculture that formed from the music genre, emotional hardcore. Core. Music connected to the scene subculture includes crunkcore, deathcore, happy hardcore, nightcore, nintendcore, metalcore, hardcore, screamo, pop punk, and post hardcore. And visuals includes various patterns like checkers, polka dots, stripes, zebra stripes, plaid or leopard prints, diamonds, rainbows, skulls, neon colors, and glitter. Alright, our next aesthetic is Lolita, and Lolita is a Japanese fashion inspired by girls and young women's clothing styles from the Victorian and Rococo period. It grew from young women's desires to dress for themselves in a way that disregarded men's opinions and women's fashion catered to the male gaze. The style is characterized by a distinctive silhouette achieved by wearing petticoats underneath dresses or skirts with a specific cut. In addition to wearing the clothes, there is a tight-knit community with a shared history, inside jokes, and strong criticism culture and multiple discussions that take place both in real life through local meetups and on social media spaces such as discord channels, facebook groups, subreddits, you know how it is. And most of all, the goal of Lolita fashion is to dress akin to a feminine doll, not a child. Alright, our next aesthetic is glitch, and glitch or glitchcore is a visual aesthetic where a normal image is edited and distorted to contain heavily saturated colors and flashing patterns. Glitchcore usually contains characters or artwork from cartoons or anime, and in this way, glitchcore is similar to aesthetics such as mind murder. It includes highly saturated colors, pixels, patterns like waves, stripes and checkers, peace signs, hearts, smiley faces, and other symbols. Alright, our next aesthetic is grunge, and grunge is a darker, edgier style that is usually depicted these days with glitches, vinyl records, cigarettes, neon lights, and the color black. Historically, the grunge movement had its roots in the 1990s hard rock scene of Seattle, Washington, and it was a countercultural, anti-consumerism youth movement and musical genre that defined Generation X. Grunge fashion was made popular by bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, and Soundgarden, and was meant to be timeless and quite casual. After the original grunge went out of fashion, it started to trail off into post-grunge, a type of commercialized radio rock that contained grunge influences, and it started coming back into fashion around the 2010s and 2020s as 90s nostalgia began. This revival saw old staples of the grunge scene making a return in the popularity such as Soundgarden with King Animal and Alice in Chains with Black Gives Way to Blue, and led to some new grunge bands rising up the ranks. But with the modern grunge movement, the philosophical 
philosophical elements of the original grunge movement were largely dropped in favor of just achieving the visual aesthetic of looking grunge. Alright, our next aesthetic is light academia, and light academia is an academic aesthetic and the visually lighter counterpart of dark academia, which we'll talk about next. Light academia utilizes a neutral and desaturated color palette, white, beige, tan, ivory cream, light brown, gold, and other pale colors that make up the aesthetic, and the photographs are taken in natural lighting with generous sunshine, often overlapping with golden hour images. All right, the next aesthetic we're gonna be talking about is its counterpart, dark academia. And dark academia is a popular academic aesthetic that revolves around classic literature, the pursuit of self-discovery, and the general passion for knowledge and learning. Because this is an internet aesthetic, it largely entails sharing photographs, making outfits, and participating in certain hobbies through social media. Dark academia's visuals stem primarily from the upper class European cultures of the 19th century, Gothicism and American prep. And because of this allure, of intelligence and mystery being pretentious is celebrated within the dark academia community. Romanticizing education and moments in life related to university experiences is the core appeal of the aesthetic, grouped with grandiose statements and wishes for success being common textbook subjects. Alright, our next aesthetic is Art Ho, and Art Ho is an aesthetic based around love for art, a connection to nature, painting, and flowers, and is symbolized by, more specifically, women who love art and nature. Visuals or fashion items include mom jeans, graphic tees, art socks, art supplies, overalls and painted overalls, shirts with thin horizontal stripes, mustard yellow clothing, colorful hair clips, bands, and uh, yeah, you know how it is. Alright, our next aesthetic is Baby Girl, and Baby Girl is an aesthetic taken from the BDSM subgenre, which relates to daddy dom slash little girl, and it's a type of dominant submissive relationship between two consenting, consenting, consenting adults, which can be sexual or non-sexual. Baby girl encompasses sweet and innocent imagery and attitudes that give the adult wear an overall childlike feel. Often this can cross over with bratty attitudes and behavior, and this means that the sweet and submissive nature can morph into teasing, pouting, tantrums, entitlement, and compulsion to challenge others. The baby girl aesthetic is not about dressing in the way an actual child would dress or mimicking childhood in any way, and it more so includes childish themes that can allow the person to release typical adult stressors and fall into a more easy and comfortable state of mind as a stress relief technique sometimes known as voluntary age regression or little space not to be confused with real age regression that is actually an involuntary and usually upsetting trauma response and i guess practitioners in this aesthetic claim that this can help to reclaim childhood wonderment and comfort all right, next up we have cottagecore. And cottagecore, also known as farmcore or countrycore, is an aesthetic inspired by a romanticized interpretation of Western agricultural life. It is centered around ideas of simple living and harmony with nature. Other themes associated with cottagecore include self-sufficiency, romanticization of domestic labor, and caring for people. While the aesthetic is prevalent on several social media sites such as Instagram and more recently TikTok, the community originated on Tumblr. And mainly, the aesthetic is a continuation of many other nature-based aesthetics, but draws the most influence from the romanticization of the English countryside from the Romantic and Victorian periods. Alright, next up we have steampunk, and steampunk aesthetics come from a subgenre of science fiction of the same name that incorporates technology and designs inspired by 19th century fashion and industrial machinery. Steampunk fiction often explores the anachronistic idea of what would have happened if society built upon steam as a primary energy source and maintained the Victorian visual style. Steampunk engineering often includes visible screws as well as analog clocks and steam-powered machines, rotating propellers and dials and fashion itself includes Victorian style clothing such as suits, waistcoats, top hats, and long dresses. Alright, our next aesthetic is Old Hollywood, and Old Hollywood is an aesthetic surrounding the movies, music, and fashion popular from the 1930s to the 1960s. It's meant to draw you into a time before and forget about the current things happening, back into a time where everything felt, quote, simpler. The old Hollywood period was the beginning of the sound era when silent movies faded out of the spotlight and the industry transitioned to sound film production. It was pretty simple as old Hollywood movies adhered to a strict set of genres, western, comedic, musical, and biography, sometimes multiple at once, and the movies have linear, simple timelines that leave no room for speculation, except when a character has a flashback and the problems are always solved at the end. And this is one of the reasons why people are drawn to this aesthetic. 
All right, our next aesthetic is surrealism. And surrealism is a cultural movement that started in 1917 and is best known for its visual artworks and writings. Artists painted unnerving, illogical scenes, sometimes with photographic precision, creating strange creatures from everyday objects and developing painting techniques that allowed the unconscious to express itself. The surrealism would begin as a literary movement in the late 1910s and early 1920s that experimented with this new way of expression. And yeah, surrealism basically just rejects any rational version of life and favors a vision that was influenced by dreams and the unconscious mind. All right, our next aesthetic is pastel, and pastel is an aesthetic that relates to pastel colors. And pastels are also known as tints and are tones of colors made by mixing a significant amount of white into the original shades. The pastel colors can be created by adding white, and the more white adding to the original shade, the more paler the pastel will be. Pastel images often have a dreamy, soft appearance to them, since pastel colors can be easy on the ice and evoke feelings of calmness and nostalgia. In the 1980s, there was a significant trend of pastel colors in men's fashion, in particular the NBC television series Miami Vice popularized what was already a growing trend even further as its lead character Sonny Crockett exclusively wore pastel shirts and suits, setting a fashion that stood popular years after the show had ended. And currently pastels are often associated with kids and or girls. Alright, our next aesthetic is rave, and a raver or someone who participates in rave is a person who regularly goes to raves. Raves are an organized dance party at a nightclub, outdoor festival, warehouse, private property, or illegally on public property. And the parties typically feature performances by DJs playing a seamless flow of electronic dance music. Ravers often commonly wear clothing that is bright and are neon colors. And uh, yeah, party hard. Alright, our next aesthetic is lo-fi, and lo-fi is an aesthetic that uses muted tones and mundane imagery to evoke a feeling of calm and nostalgia. Primary a genre of music, the minimal melody and repetitive cadence of lo-fi encourages people to stop in the moment and pay attention to the world around them, as opposed to the often cynical use of nostalgia in other aesthetics. Visually, lo-fi features muted colors with simple or complex graphics amidst a peaceful scene. Alright, our next aesthetic is femboy, and femboy is a self-identifier for a man or a boy expressing himself in a fashion perceived to be feminine or otherwise soft. The key defining feature is contrasting gender signifiers. Femboy aesthetics display an interplay between clothes and behaviors that are culturally considered to be feminine, a masculine gender identity, and masculine and youthful physical features. A lot of this aesthetic looks similar to the baby girl and sometimes Nico aesthetics, except for boys. Femboys have become recently popular on social media, probably thanks to the prevalence of feminine male characters, genderless characters, and cross-dressers in anime and manga. Alright, next up we have Retrofuturism, and Retrofuturism is a movement in the creative arts showing the influence of depictions of the future produced from an earlier era. If futurism is sometimes called a science bent on anticipating what will come, Retrofuturism is the remembering of that anticipation. It's characterized by a blend of old-fashioned, quote, retro styles with futuristic technologies, and Retrofuturism also explores the themes of tension between past and future, and between the alienating and empowering effects of technology. Alright, next up we have Synthwave, and Synthwave is a particular aesthetic that draws a lot of inspirations from the 1980s, and while it does often get lumped in with Vaporwave, there are significant differences between these genres. While it is particularly regarded as a musical genre, there are examples of Synthwave in movies, TV shows, art, and video games, and the music itself strongly shares some key traits within the French house or Italo disco. Alright, next up we have Plant Mom. And Plant Mom is centered around having plants and plant-related accessories. They raise various plants as if they were their own biological children, and despite the name Plant Mom, the aesthetic is not gender-specific. The Plant Mom aesthetic is centered around plants again, with a special emphasis on flowers and succulents. And the Plant Mom aesthetic often has a slightly vintage feel, often with Polaroid cameras, old watering cans, and envelopes, and old compendiums of plants and plant names. Alright, next up we're going to talk about Kawaii, and Kawaii is a Japanese term and aesthetic referring to the unique concept affirming childlike and pretty things that make your heart quote flutter. However, different from the English word cute, it is distinct in, in that it's so diversified that it spawned many subgenres which often are far removed from the original concept. For example, Gurokawa refers to creepy cute things and Erokawa refers to erotic but cute. Alright, next up we have club and the club aesthetic is centered around entertainment venues and bars that usually operate late into the night, and a nightclub is generally distinguished from regular bars, pubs, or taverns by the inclusion of a stage for live music 
music, one or more dance floor areas, and the DJ booth. Dating back to the 19th century, clubs used to be places that offered live entertainment, gambling, and was often used by prostitutes of that time to find clientele, ranging from playboys of the time to sailors on leave. The visuals of the club aesthetic can share a lot in common with the raver and glow wave aesthetic with bright lights, glowing objects, drinks, and party drugs. All right, next up we have City Pop, and City Pop is an old genre of pop music from Japan that began in the mid-1970s, rising to the peak of its popularity in the late 1970s and early 1980s, and spread to other parts of Asia. It's also considered the predecessor to modern J-pop, and various City Pop songs are sampled in popular rap today and many future funk songs. Despite the best years of City Pop being behind the genre, the spirit of it lives on as sometimes it'll be interspersed with vaporwave, and a lot of City Pop aesthetics will find themselves tied to the lo-fi aesthetic, thus ensuring City Pop's legacy in internet aesthetic history. Alright, next up we have Mori K, and Mori K is a Japanese fashion that centers around an appearance inspired by living in the woods. In Japan, the style is generally referred to as Mori Girl or Mori Boy, depending on the gender. And beginning in Japan, the style also saw considerable popularity overseas where the name Mori K began to be used, leading to the creation of various communities on social media and live journals surrounding it. All right, next up we have Bimbo, and Bimbo or Bimbo Core is an aesthetic centered around pink and glitter, old 2000s photos, and hyper pop. The fashion style specifically is centered around body positivity for women, sexuality, and pink and a doll-like charm. And currently the exact origins of Bimbo Core are unknown, but the style is mainly inspired by the 2000s McBling aesthetic as well as Barbie Core, and is very similar to Bubblegum Bitch which is also inspired by these, except that it lacks the same level of quote, bad bitch and fuck this energy. Bimbo core is related to bimbification, which has two meanings. The first is a BDSM kink where someone, usually woman, is transformed into a stereotypical airheaded quote, slut, happy to be used consensually. And the second type is a feminist movement among Gen Z relating to taking back femininity by adopting a hyper feminine style and pretending to be a dumb bimbo to manipulate men. All right, next up we have Foodie. And Foodie is a gourmet or person who has an ardent refined interest in food and alcoholic beverages. It involves seeking new food experiences as a hobby rather than simply eating out of convenience or hunger, and the foodie aesthetic is dedicated to showing off these foods in very aesthetically pleasing manners. Most foodie shows provide a strong emphasis on food, be it cooking shows or competition cooking shows and or reality shows and on top of this there are also several youtube channels that foodies will watch that generally falls into the same category as the aesthetic all right next up we have new age and new age is an aesthetic intended to create an artistic inspiration relaxation and optimism and it is used by listeners for yoga massage meditation and reading as a method of stress management to bring about a state of ecstasy rather than trance or create a peaceful atmosphere in their home or environments and is associated with environmentalism and new age spirituality and one of the key values of new age is peacefulness all right, next up we have Gyaru, and Gyaru is one of the most famous Japanese fashion subcultures. And while the term has been around since 1968, it wasn't until the late 1980s after Gyaru's predecessor, Bodhikon, spread in popularity, and that gal culture was born and established the iconic look that everyone now knows as Gyaru. At the height of its popularity, it was not rare to see celebrities sporting the style. The tan skin, big hair, and rebellious outfits went highly against the traditional Japanese beauty standards. And while Gyaru appeared very extreme in the past, it toned down as time went on and could be still found in small communities today. All right, next up we have Magical Girls, and Magical Girls are a genre in fictional media which centers around the concept of girls coming of age and possessing power through their femininity rather than by rejecting it. It is a common theme for their protagonists to need to balance their school lives, personal lives, and their responsibilities of saving the world as a magical girl. The aesthetic is often hyper-feminine and very in touch with expressing emotion freely, both positive and negative. Magical Girls are often in a team of young girls destined to save a world, and these characters often have their own designated color, weapon, and power assigned to them, although all three can vary. And though the aesthetic and genre is more geared towards girls, there are various examples of magical boys existing as well. All right, next up we have Hot Topic, and Hot Topic is an aesthetic surrounding the fashion and products from the shop of the same name, Hot Topic, throughout its long storied history. Now, Hot Topic itself has faced criticism for being both a bandwagon writer in terms of what's popular, as well as being incredibly overpriced. And while many goth and punk elitists would often turn their nose up at a store like Hot Topic for your average small town kid who doesn't exactly have access to boutiques that specialize in different sorts of fashion, this store is absolutely used as a necessity to get the clothing and music that they like. All right, next up we have Tropical. 
and tropical is an aesthetic that is based on comfort, ease, and utility, and is eclectic by definition. The style is characterized by warm and soothing themes and colors, drawn mostly from natural elements such as the sea, sky, and vegetation, and hues may be deep and rich or may fall on the lighter, brighter side. All right, moving on to tier three. Yes, let's fucking go, bro. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far, and I hope you're having fun. And first off, we have Clowncore, and Clowncore is an aesthetic that surrounds things such as clowns, mimes, and jesters. Content from this aesthetic is usually bright and happy, although some portrayals of Clowncore can have horror influences. And the visuals include clowns, rainbows, stickers, circus tents, birthday cake, cotton candy, balloons, clown emojis, gumballs, ice cream, you know how it is. Clowns. Alright, next we have Kidcore, and Kidcore is an aesthetic that centers around bright colors, nostalgia icons from the 90s, and kid themes. While its origins can be traced back to the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and 2000s, it appears that the aesthetic is a nostalgia-based creation of the 2010s. Kidcore differs from Babycore as it is more focused on bright colors, cartoons, nostalgia, toys, and accessories, as opposed to soft pastels, stuffies, soft kawaii fashion, and baby items. Common motifs in Kidcore visuals are bright colors for frequently used on children's toys, rainbows, and other kid themes. All right, next up we have Webcore, and Webcore is an aesthetic utilizing traditional web design elements combined with aspects of poetry and self-expression. These include GIFs, video games, and clip art, and the aesthetic expresses nostalgia for internet culture of the early 1990s to 2010s. Old Web's philosophical heart yearns for the days of uninhibited individualism of the old web before the internet became streamlined and social media monopolized how people communicated, and it also has a love for web graphic design that follows the rounded blue edge windows, old software on Windows XP achieved, and sharp looking windows that appear on software from Windows 95 or Windows 98. Alright, next up we have Weirdcore, and Weirdcore is a surrealist aesthetic centered around amateur or low quality foot photography and or visual images that have been constructed or edited to convey feelings of confusion, disorientation, dread, alienation, and nostalgia or anemia. Visually, it is strongly influenced by the general look and feel of images shared on older internet, roughly a period spanning from the late 90s and mid 2000s. Amateur editing, primitive digital graphics, lo-fi photography, and image compression are some of the most common elements found in these weird core images. All right, next up we have Batty, and Batty is an aesthetic primarily associated with Instagram and beauty gurus on YouTube that is centered around being conventionally attractive by today's beauty standards. Because of the trendiness of this aesthetic, it can often have parallels with other trendy aesthetics. The Batty aesthetic is influenced heavily by the likes of the Kardashian or Jenner style and some of the more popular Instagram models. All right, next up we have trauma core and trauma core is a type of aesthetic imagery that delves into themes of abuse and trauma along with cute visuals to give the aesthetic a bittersweet tragic feel mental emotional and spiritual abuse are common themes in trauma core and it generally tends to be more focused on trauma experienced in childhood explaining the cute visuals juxtaposed with the traumatic backstory behind them although adult trauma can also be covered many people turn to these images to help them cope with pain that they suffered in the past and most images for trauma core are ones of hello kitty dream core and nostalgia core overlapped with dark messages all right next up we have y2k and since the advent of the internet y2k short for the year 2000 has become a broad term that describes the social zeitgeist of the world between the late 1990s and early 2000s Named after the year 2000 problem, it is characterized by fashion, hardware design, music, futuristic technology, and optimism relevant to the time period. And since the mid-late 2010s, the group of aesthetics described as Y2K have made a resurgence in popular culture and social media. Alright, next up we have Juggalo, and a Juggalo is a fan of the group Insane Clown Posse or any other psychopathic records hip-hop group. Juggalos have their own idiom, slang, characteristics, and the gathering of the Juggalos, alternately known as the quote gathering, is a notable annual festival held by the Juggalos and the artists that they support, which have included rap stars such as Busta Rhymes, Ice Cube, and MC Hammer. While many frown on the behaviors of Juggalos, and over its first 11 events, the festival had an average attendance of about 10,000 fans, with a peak of 20,000 in 2010. Alright, next up we have Club Kids, and Club Kids were a group of New York 
city dance club personalities led by Michael Ellick and James St. James in the late 1980s and early 1990s. And several club kids have made long lasting contributions to mainstream art and fashion, even in the present day. A movie about the club kids was made through World of Wonder Productions called Party Monster. And the club kid aesthetic has started to see resurgence with a brand new generation. Although the new club kids definitely seem to have more introverted nature compared to the rowdy and raucous club kids of old. Alright, next up we have military, and military is an aesthetic that centers around fashion and visuals associated with the military. While military wear has become popular among self-proclaimed patriots with nationalistic ideas, many into the aesthetic simply just enjoy the looks. And the flip side of military aesthetic is paramilitary, also known as SWAT Corps, SWAT Punk, etc. This is not exactly a form of military aesthetic, but similar in a nutshell. Alright, next up we have Adam Punk, and Adam Punk is an aesthetic centered around the view of the future from the perspective of the 1950s and 1960s, and it often depicts imagery associated with traditionally American values, particularly a belief in the nuclear family and the suburban lifestyle. Adam Punk typically envisions a satirical or dark twist, including post-apocalyptic space age settings, and take the older 1950s aesthetic and incorporate punk sensibilities. Alright, next up we have Witchcore, and Witchcore is an aesthetic centered around the themes of modern witchcraft. It often involves magic, herbs, and gem collecting, and has some elements of cottagecore or naturecore, since some of the aesthetic revolves around the outdoor setting. Witchcore visuals vary by type of witchcraft, however there are patterns of objects and places frequently involved in witchcraft and witchcore as an aesthetic, such as glass bottles, smaller potion bottles, plants, herbs, mushrooms, candles, tarot cards, wands, you know how it is. Alright, next up we have liminal spaces, and this aesthetic is a location which is a transition between two other locations or state of being. Typically, these are abandoned and oftentimes empty, like a mall in early morning or a school hallway during summer, for example. This makes it feel frozen and slightly unsettling, but also familiar to our minds. It mostly includes 20th early to 21st century architecture, especially including linoleum tiling and ceiling tiles and cool toned fluorescent lighting to give the space a cold feeling. These liminal space aesthetics relate to the unique feelings of eeriness, nostalgia, and apprehension people report when presented with such places outside of their designed context. Alright, next up we have Comfy or Cozy, and Comfy Cozy is an aesthetic that relates to the feeling of being comfortably at rest with your surroundings, neatly fit in your place, and relieved and well suited. It also includes having pets, reading books, and sitting next to your fireplace or window or on a bed. Usually associated with autumn and pumpkin spices, it also includes reading, sleeping, watching movies, or just doing nothing whilst at ease and petting your dog and cat. Alright, next up we have Nostalgia Core, and this is an aesthetic involving nostalgia and archived history. Most senses of nostalgia focuses on childhood, teenhood, TV shows, movies, music, snacks, trends, fashion, video games, and other forms of technology. Hangout places such as malls, books, comics, and many other things. The visual aspect of nostalgia core can include pixel art, low poly, 3D models, and literally whatever else could be associated with it based on the practitioners or viewers subjective experience. Alright, next up we have Nature Core, and Nature Core is an aesthetic surrounding the theme of animals and other nature-related things. It is similar to Bloom Core and is a subgenre of Cottage Core. Nature Core visuals, unsurprisingly, focus on nature and the idyllic and often romanticized version of being out in nature. Of course, that's not to stop Nature Core from going into some darker elements of nature like the circle of life, poisonous plants, and just the general struggle of the animal and plant kingdoms within nature. All right, next up we have Dreamy, and Dreamy is an aesthetic that revolves around dreams. The Dreamy aesthetic can dance between the realms of being somewhat grounded in reality to being so surreal that there's no confusing it with the state of one's reality. Dreamy visuals usually have a very ethereal vibe, which can either be a realistic ethereal or surreal ethereal, but shares a lot in common with the lo-fi aesthetic. All right, next up we have Yami Kawaii, and this directly translates into sickly cute, and this is a Japanese aesthetic with a stronger emphasis on dark themes and colors. The aesthetic first emerged among members of Japan's mental health subculture, Menhara, during the 2000s, but didn't have a name for it until 2015. The initial purpose of the aesthetic was to have a creative outlet to cope with mental health issues, while also challenging the social stigma that judges a person suffering by bad appearance. Generally, Yami Kawaii is kept in dark colors to match its negative worldview, and while pastel colors are also used, it's usually for the purpose of making important details stand out from the rest of the image. Alright, next up we have Desh style, and this style, also known as neoplasticism, was a Dutch 
Polish art movement founded in 1917 in Leiden. It consisted of artists, architects, and designers brought together by Theo van Doesburg. And in a narrow sense, it is used to refer to works from 1917 to 1924. Proponents of this style advocated pure abstraction and universality by a reduction to the essentials of form and color, and they simplified visual compositions to vertical and horizontal, using only black, white, and primary colors. And the movement's influence was immense as it continues to affect artists, designers, and architects today. Alright, next up we have fairy core, and fairy core, also known as fairy folk, is a fantasy themed aesthetic that centers predominantly around fairy and elf mythology. Visuals include nature, soft pastels, butterflies, magic, flowers, soft animals like bunnies, and the vibe of springtime. They usually feature feminine visuals and styles, and the more masculine equivalent subtype is elf core. Alright, next up we have Acid Wave, and Acid Wave is centered around visuals inspired by depictions of hallucinations caused by hallucinogenic drugs like LSD, and it started as a subgenre of house music that was popular in raves, but has evolved into a full-blown aesthetic in its own right. Acid Wave visuals have a very melty, psychedelic, and colorful appearance, often drawing upon tie-dye imagery that was popular in the days of the hippies. Despite that, some Acid Wave aesthetic imagery can have a dark, unsettling vibe to them, like a bad acid trip, as well as a peaceful tranquil vibe. Alright, next up we have Acid Pixie, and Acid Pixie molds together elements of biopunk, void punk, and specific elements of new goth and indie. The aesthetic is in many ways similar to the indie kid aesthetic, however there is a natural element in the Acid Pixie aesthetic, and a certain unsettling, almost ethereal edge. Photos in this aesthetic have a neon overlay, but with hidden satanic implementations, such as brightly colored pentagrams or glowing devil horns with flower crowns. Contrarily, there is a lot of black implemented into the Acid Pixie aesthetic, and some are a lot bold with satanic and witchcraft innuendos. Alright, next up we have Yume Kawaii, and Yume Kawaii is a Japanese aesthetic that centers around fantasy themes and pastel colors. It appears like the embodiment of a quote, girl's dream, and you could find many illustrations, clothing, and goods which incorporate the aesthetic. Due to the nature of dreams, it can also feature nightmarish elements. It does not only consist of nice dreams, so due to that there are image edits and artworks that embody this pale cuteness and slightly sad poems, and there are artists that mainly focus on the Yume Kawaii aesthetic. And unlike other Kawaii aesthetics such as Yami Kawaii, Yume Kawaii is more of an umbrella term to describe a visual culture than it is a fashion aesthetic. Alright, next up we have Yandere, and Yandere is derived from the Japanese words Yanderu, which means to be mentally ill, and Dere Dere, which means lovey dovey, and it describes a character archetype with an unhealthy love-related obsession that often relates to violent outbreaks triggered by unrequited love or disappointment. Another similar type of character would be Yangare, who turns violent regardless of love. Due to the controversial nature of Yandere as a trope of anime, often criticized of fetishizing or demonizing the mentally ill, as well as romanticizing abuse, this aesthetic has become distinct from the more wholesome love core, and the term is generally only used in reference to fiction and does not hold any actual background in psychiatric diagnosis. Alright, next up we have Slime Punk, and Slime Punk is a musical micro-genre that emerged in the early 2010s among internet communities, and it is characterized by an aesthetic dominated by slime-related pop culture references, ranging from the Toxic Adventure, Slime Time Live, Mountain Dew, and Toxic Waste. Slime Punk music oftentimes features heavy and distorted bass lines and has emerged largely from a post-acid scene. Alright, next up we have Goblin Core, and Goblin Core is an aesthetic based on the appreciation of aspects of nature, not typically regarded as beautiful. These aspects can range from animals such as frogs and snails to materials such as moss, mud, plants, and fungi such as mushrooms. A part of this beloved ugliness is the goblin itself, which is a malevolent demon creature in European folklore, but in Goblin Core, a carefree representation of one's infatuation with nature's ugliness and general unpredictability. Alright, next up we have Gurokawa, or Creepy Cute. And Gurokawa, also known as Creepy Cute, is a Japanese aesthetic that is characterized by a juxtaposition of kawaii visuals with grotesque elements and morbid humor. It's similar to pastel goth, except without traditional goth elements, and Gorokawa takes advance of the expectation that cute themes also feature cute characters and vice versa, and it twists this. Not only are there many depictions of monsters with an overly cute appearance, but also adorable mascot characters engaging in violent and cruel behavior. Alright, next we 
of Baroque, and Baroque is a term used to describe the predominant art movement and style of European architecture, music, and art of the 17th and early 18th centuries. It was later also applied to art, fashion, and architecture of the period, but eventually lost its pejorative tone. Though relatively minor, the 20th and 21st centuries have seen a renewed and prolonged interest in Baroque music, art, and motifs. And the artistic movement is characterized by its melodramatic tableaus, lavish ornamentation, use of deep colors, and a symmetry. All right, next up we have Love Core, and Love Core, which shares the visuals and ethos of Valentine's Day, is based on the visual culture of manufactured romance. The forms of love that the aesthetic specifically focuses on are affectionate, dopamine-filled, and gushy. <laughs> Gushy. <laughs> it can involve both requited and unrequited relationships, with both crushing on someone from afar and the rituals of dating being shown in these images. Alright, next up we have Shibuya Punk, and Shibuya Punk is an aesthetic based on various media that surrounds inline skating, graffiti, street gangs, or all of the following in an urban setting. The style originated with a year 2000 Sega Dreamcast game known as Jet Set Radio, which was praised for its distinct art direction at the time, and the game would immediately gain a cult following and would have its style, art, and music as an influence or inspiration for indie titles in recent times. Alright, moving on to tier 4, yeah, let's do this guys. We're doing great and next up we have anti-fashion and anti-fashion is an umbrella term for various styles of dress which are explicitly contrary to the fashion of the day anti-fashion styles may represent an attitude of indifference or may arise from a political or a practical goals which make fashion a secondary priority anti-fashion dates back to the 19th century but these anti-fashion outfits were worn for functional reasons like riding a bicycle or swimming more and more anti-fashion trends would arise in the 20th century accompanying the birth of new forms of music media and dance from America. Alright, next up we have Blobweb, and Blobweb, or Corporate Memphis, is a minimalist visual aesthetic. It takes flat design and blends it with shades of corporate and the original Memphis design, and this art style aims to create visuals that are easy to mass produce and utilize for commercial purposes. It utilizes basic color theory. The main four colors tend to be used are red, green, blue, and yellow, and they often avoid dynamic shading, aiming for a flat and sleek look. It's known for its vector illustrations and common body proportions tend to be small heads with big torsos and or long bending legs. All right, next up we have Flapper, and Flappers were young Western women in the 1920s who embraced the free lifestyle. They are known for their short skirts and above shoulder length hair, and they also listen to jazz. Smoking, drinking, driving automobiles, and casual sex were another part of the lifestyles of Flappers, and essentially Flappers made their disdain for socially acceptable female behavior known by engaging in these actions. Alright, next up we have Wormcore, and Wormcore, also known as Worm Time, is based on the toys known as Worm on a String, Magic Worm, and Squirmals, and memes from this aesthetic often feature Worm on a String toys making threats of violence, crime, especially arson, and the thievery of various body parts, and, and additionally many include worm related puns such as asking any last worms to a worm held at toy gunpoint. Alright, next up we have Diesel Punk, and Diesel Punk is a genre similar to steampunk that combines the tier 2 industrial technology and aesthetics of the diesel-based technology of the interwar period of the 1910s and 1940s with retro-futuristic technology that doesn't actually need diesel despite the name. And Diesel Punk fashion is in a lot of ways similar to steampunk fashion but with a darker color palette to choose from. And some popular items include waistcoats, arm covers, bomber jackets, zoot suits, wristwatches, goggles, overalls and basically anything that would have been worn during the interwar period that diesel punk is designed to emulate. Alright, next up we have Deco Punk, and Deco Punk is a recent subset of the punk sci-fi genres, especially Diesel Punk, centered around the art deco and streamlined modern art styles that were popular during the Roaring Twenties and stayed in fashion until sometime in the 1950s. It has a sleeker and shiny aesthetic compared to Diesel Punk, which has a tendency to be more gritty, and Deco Punk shares a lot in common with Diesel Punk aesthetics, but with a more focus on the art deco style, and a perfect visual example of the Deco Punk aesthetic would be the original Bioshock video game. Alright, next up we have Biopunk, and Biopunk is a considered a subgenre of cyberpunk with more of a focus on biotechnology than the focus on information technology that cyberpunk focuses on. Biopunk stories tend to focus more on genetic engineering, biohacking, biotech, more mega corporations, and oppressive government agencies focus on manipulating human DNA. While the aesthetic itself stems from cyberpunk, so is the fashion surrounding biopunk. They share darkware and techware inspiration with biopunk putting an emphasis on practical scientific outfits. Alright, next up we have Italian Mafia, 
in the Italian Mafia aesthetic is based off of the Italian organized crime families that became prevalent in the 19th century. The word mafia in Italian loosely translates to swagger or boldness as implemented in the aesthetic and current day adoption of the Italian Mafia aesthetic focuses on the expensive look and risk of danger. The topic is written into many fictional novels and fan fictions where authors and readers may use it as an escape into a more exciting life and fashion for the Italian Mafia as an aesthetic is written in the fiction and popularized online, utilizing the quote sexy alluring details of high fashion and class as well as the seedy underbelly of running with criminals and doing dirty work. Alright next up we have holosexual and holosexual is the aesthetic of shiny and reflective or holographic images. These images usually contain white or light pastel backgrounds that reflect off into rainbows and the objects or themes that are often used are holographic materialistic clothes, boots, bags, discs, crystals, marble floors, knives, sunglasses, jewels, shower tiles, glitter, mermaid merch, reflective water, the odd grid pattern, and edited swirled holographics. Alright next up we have cartoon core and cartoon core is an aesthetic centered completely around western animation as opposed to anime core which has more of a focus on Japanese animation. Cartoon core can either focus on a specific cartoon, animation, or movie, or it can simply draw from the aesthetics of the style and create something completely new and unique to introduce the world. Due to the fact there are a lot more variety to western animation compared to relative uniformity of anime, there is room for multiple subgenres of cartoon core to pop up, and cartoon core is also closely related to nostalgia core because many people grew up watching these cartoons over the past couple of decades. Alright next up we have C-Punk, and C-Punk is a music and visual art genre that utilize imagery from the 2000 cyberpunk culture, including dolphins, pyramids, bright colors, beat scenes, and dreamscapes. The music often incorporates ocean sounds and electronic beats, and C-Punk was extremely popular in the late 2000s and early 2010s until it started getting mainstream too quickly, culminating in the infamous Rihanna performance on Saturday Night Live of her hit song Diamonds, which co-opted a lot of C-Punk imagery and aesthetics during it. After this incident, C-Punk fell in popularity and was eventually replaced by the very similar Vaporwave, and despite this, however, there have been rumblings in the Vaporwave community of possibly a C-Punk renaissance to serve as a happy fun time music to pair with normally moody and atmospheric vaporwave music. Alright next up we have Rainbow Core and Rainbow Core is an aesthetic focused on rainbows. It has much overlap with scene, glow wave, old web, holosexual, kid core, and decora. The fashion is very colorful and vibrant almost like you're wearing a rainbow and this particular aesthetic has been popular across internet culture for some time and many of the most popular content includes car wraps, color art pieces and abstract videos that are designed to look like a digital kaleidoscope of sorts. Alright next up we have cyber prep and cyber prep is a term referring to a society that has developed in the same aspects of cyberpunk toward a utopian direction with fair law and no world controlling corporations. Since society is largely leisure driven, advanced body modifications are used for sports, pleasure, and self-improvement, and cyber prep aesthetics apply the visuals often seen in cyberpunk to a utopia, centering on the positives of technological advancements. Alright next up we have Decora and Decora is a Japanese aesthetic and style that revolves around an excessive amount of accessories, the primary focus being plastic hair accessories and bracelets. The style can be combined with pretty much any clothing but the most popular base fashions are Pop K and Fairy K. The outfits combine casual clothes with many layers in the form of multiple hair clips, bracelets, tall skirts, stockings, leg warmers, and pins. Face stickers are also very common to be worn with colorful makeup that matches the clothing. Alright next up we have Space Core. And space core is a type of aesthetic that is centered around astronomy, stars, and planets. It could also be called astral core or cosmic core. Space core uses a lot of stars and planet type things in clothing or decor, and space core visuals include things like galaxies, stars, nebulae, planets, moons, and overall pictures of the universe, as well as things like telescopes, space rockets, and traveling along far distances and on foreign planets. Alright next up we have Sad People and Sad People is an aesthetic on Tumblr best known for its black and white edits of shows and anime between the 80s and 90s. Cigarettes, trippy imagery, blood, and sexual imagery. Within the Sad People group there are sad boys and sad MBs and sad girls and these are simply gender terms and do not change the aesthetics visuals for the person. Sad people often feel lost either mentally or physically which is the reason why they revel in their aesthetics tones. It has some relation to Trauma Core but Trauma Core deals with physical abuse and abandonment while sad people is more about mental trauma. And unlike trauma core, the sad people aesthetic tends to focus more on feelings of isolation, loneliness, and anxiety that 
don't necessarily come from a form of PTSD and distinctly lacks the childlike nature trauma core tends to have. All right, next up we have real life superhero and real life superhero movement is an aesthetic that involves dressing up like a comic book character and generally engaging in good deeds where it can range from simple things like visiting sick children in the hospital to simple neighborhood watches to more controversial actions like actual vigilantism. Oftentimes the aesthetic will put out promotional material for their, for their superhero endeavors that invoke the aesthetics of a comic book itself. While generally members of the real life superhero aesthetic put on the costume just to go out to be good samaritans there have been instances in which members of the movement actually got trained in martial arts to actually fight crime and they often get criticized due to it being viewed as a form of vigilantism and one of the most infamous examples is phoenix jones who was known to get incredibly physical with criminals he was busting before he himself turned out to be a criminal in his own right after his recent arrest due to being caught with possession of cocaine with intent to sell becoming the very thing he used to fight against all right, next up we have Ocean Grunge, and Ocean Grunge is a music-centric aesthetic that is considered the darker version of C-Punk, and it started in 2014. It takes a lot of the elements from C-Punk and Vaporwave, but has a darker air and color palette applied to it than the usual colorful palette associated with the other two. The music itself takes a lot of inspiration from early Vaporwave, Drone, New Metal, and Grunge, and it tends to borrow a lot of visuals from C-Punk. But again, rather than the rich, vibrant colors one often sees with that particular genre, it tends to be more monochromatic, utilizing lots of grays and muted blues. Alright, next up we have Dark Paradise, and the Dark Paradise aesthetic focuses on images of serenity with a veil of darkness laid over it to rouse a sense of dark calmness. Dark Paradise revolves around visually dark photos, as if taken in the dark or in the late evening, and the aesthetic is very versatile and can apply to other aesthetics due to the dark nature of common photos. The visuals are mostly photos that are dark or have a overlaying filter that bring a sense of calmness or stillness. All right, next up we have dollcore, and dollcore is an aesthetic that is inspired by ball-jointed dolls, both antique and modern, and it mostly centers around the transient beauty that lies in a doll-like, delicate nature in the form of artistic photography and image edits but also encompasses fashion. The more extreme fans of the aesthetic follow a practice referred to as dolling, in which they turn themselves into living dolls. All right, next up we have Glow Wave, and Glow Wave is an aesthetic surrounding the theme of things that glow in the dark or glow with the assistance from a UV light. It is commonly associated with raving or just good old fashioned partying, though it could have ties with old hippie culture. The aesthetic focuses on things like glow sticks, lasers, and anything that literally glows in the dark. It could include things that you find in arcades, skating rinks, and raves, and a lot of psychedelic blacklight posters that were very popular amongst hippie subcultures of the 60s and 70s. All right, next up we have Angel Core, and Angel Core is a contemporary aesthetic inspired by imagery and depictions of angels and is adjacent to devil core. It is very similar in vibe to Rococo style of the 18th century and the aesthetic is designed to emulate the same unearthly beauty that the European stereotype of angels are described and depicted with, though it can also include non-European angel aesthetics. Alright, next up we have Devil Core, and Devil Core is an aesthetic that is inspired by the gross and creepy and even seductive. It frequently applies to mood boards and uses occult and satanic imagery as pictures in such boards. Devil Core often uses disturbing or graphic imagery, text boxes, and pictures implying sinful activities. And images used in these aesthetics may include satanic imagery like inverted pentagrams, the Leviathan cross, and demonic sigils. All right, next up we have Casino, and Casino is an aesthetic that is based around the theme of casinos, gambling, and coin games. Casinos are, of course, designed to create a pleasant atmosphere to reduce stress and convey a, quote, playground environment, thus encouraging patrons to spend more money. Casino visuals will have a strong focus on the regular casino culture and casino games and feature a lot of neon lights, slot machines, pool tables, and alcohol. All right, next up we have Yakuza, and, and Yakuza are members of transnational organized crime syndicates originating in Japan. And yeah, the Yakuza aesthetic visually typically involves black and white photography or artwork depicting various activities and fashion styles of the Yakuza. And tattoos are common traits of Yakuza imagery, and these tattoos usually consist of artwork of Japanese cultural staples or Japanese folktales. 
Alright, next up we have Ethereal, and Ethereal is an aesthetic based around the feeling of being extremely delicate and light in a way that seems to be not of this world. It is typically used to be in reference to Disney or Barbie princess movies and other fantasy movies that are completely without irony in their dreamy romanticism. Alright, next up we have Nautical, and Nautical is an aesthetic centered around sailing or living near the sea. Nautical visuals mostly involve images of life on the sea, on a boat, or even from the shore living in a life. House. The aesthetic also includes or relates to a ship tied up to a dock and gives the feeling of being at sea or in the ocean or relaxing on a boat or yacht. Alright, next up we have Game Night, and Game Night is an aesthetic that revolves around the general atmosphere of board or tabletop games, junk food, and friendship. This would be exemplified by any form of traditional games, some examples including D&D, Chess, Warhammer 40k, Monopoly, Battleship, Uno, Pathfinder, and Clue, and others. Communities have been created around Game Nights, and multiple clubs even exist in college campuses, bookstores, or libraries, simply revolving around tabletop gaming. Now playing board or tabletop games is generally considered nerdy and is often coupled with lighthearted memes and jokes about people who participate in this sort of activity. Alright, next up we have Psychedelia, and Psychedelia refers to the psychedelic art, psychedelic music, and the subculture that originated in the psychedelic experience of the 1960s by people who use psychedelic drugs such as LSD, mescaline, and psilocybin. Psychedelic art and music typically recreate or reflect the experience of altered consciousness, and it uses highly distorted surreal visuals, bright colors, and full spectrums in animation in order to evoke, convey, or enhance the psychedelic experience. All right, next Next up we have Monkey Core, and Monkey Core is an aesthetic that is based on the idea of returning to the primitive state of a monkey. It often comes with the dissatisfaction with modern life and its complexities, hence the idea to return to a simple society without human systems in place and without complex thought. Monkey Core visuals include images of trees, jungles, and bananas, and non-human apes often with glitch text or impact text font, and the phrase reject humanity, return to monkey. All right, moving on to tier five. Yes, let's do this. And next up we have Fash Wave, and Fash Wave is a derivative aesthetic of synth wave or vapor wave that is associated with alt-right or far-right dissident right beliefs like upholding tradition or maintaining racial purity. It is related with anti-semitism, ultra-nationalism, and rejection of postmodernist thought. It's not unusual for people from the fast wave scene to try and assimilate into the more mainstream synth wave and vapor scenes, but they are often sniffed out pretty quickly and given the boot because nobody wants to actually associate with neo-Nazis. Alright, next up we have Labor Wave, and Labor Wave is a derivative of Vaporwave that is less subtle about its critiques of capitalism and take advantage of this aspect of Vaporwave to promote a communist or socialist agenda. Labor Wave creators, much like Fash Wave creators, will often confuse Synthwave aesthetics and Vaporwave aesthetics, which generally leads to both mixing and matching the two aesthetics without really understanding the differences between Synthwave and Vaporwave. Various socialist tendencies depict opposing ideologies and leaders in Labor Wave, with the dominant ideology in the community being Marxism or Leninism, since it's prevalent in the libertarian, socialist, and anarchist communities. Alright, next up we have High School Dream, and this is literally an aesthetic that glorifies high school culture, usually from American high schools, and the stereotypical vibe of it that you would like get from, you know, a, a American high school movie, like yellow school buses, football games, lockers, all that shit. Alright, next up we have Void Memes, and Void Memes are a type of aesthetic memes involving unsettling edits of a popular meme or video, usually involving bass boosted audio and creepy comical imagery. Usually the meme edits are meant to be unsettling with sometimes ear rape music in the background of a popular scene from a show or meme and a comical or even scary edits of the main character's face. Alright, next up we have brocore in bro culture or brocore is a subculture of young men who spend time partying with others like themselves. Many aspects of brocore can vary regionally and it can blend in with the surfer culture of California, the redneck culture of the Southeast, the preppy culture of New England, and yeah, brocore visuals feature things that will typically get the adrenaline pumping and the testosterone flowing, like faster loud cars, sports, guys getting drunks, ogling beautiful women, and occasionally getting in fights to establish the quote bro hierarchy. <laughs> Alright, next up we got Americana, and Americana is a loosely defined aesthetic which consists of music, artifacts, scenery, folklore, and material culture which are seen as distinctly or especially 
quote, American. Much of the aesthetic is characterized by nostalgia for an idolized past, often seen as more wholesome than modern American culture and style. Right next up, we have Mall Ninja. And Mall Ninja is a braggadocious stereotype involving boasting about weapon proficiency and being quote, badass, despite a lack of mastery and respect for weapons practices. Obsessed with weapons, tropes depicted in anime, action movies, or other violent fiction, the mall ninja is characterized by clumsy by clumsy threats or posturing for superiority. And the mall ninja is really just an offshoot in relation to the internet tough guy. All right, next up we have urban core. And urban core is an aesthetic based on imagery of urban cities and street life. Urban core is associated to real life, modern day society, and almost always is based in recent decades. As it is a really broad aesthetic, it can revolve around city streets and architecture, graffiti, skate parks at night, urban fashion, and picnics. All right, next up, we're going to be talking about crackhead and crackhead, not to be confused with drug core enthusiasts, is an aesthetic centered around being chaotic, unpredictable, stupid, clumsy, lazy, and inconvenient dumbasses. The term is very popular on Tumblr and among school kids, and the aesthetic has no relations with actual drugs. Many of the visual examples of the crackhead aesthetic show messy rooms, but this is not the entire idea of the aesthetic. And some other examples include people doing foolish activities or pictures that might make you question their existence. Crackhead's sole purpose is to confuse you, and in many ways, the aesthetic is a pain to look at, especially for perfectionists, because of its uncountable imperfections. Alright, next up we have After Hours, and After Hours is an aesthetic inspired by impressions of canopsia, a term for the forlong feeling of seeing a place that's usually bustling with people, and instead being empty and abandoned. After Hours isn't defined in terms of a specific art style or media, but instead various abandoned places such as empty streets, schools, and parks. However, the aesthetic is not limited to physical settings, as online settings such as abandoned blogs, empty game servers, and inactive web websites can also elicit similar feelings. Alright, next up we have Lounge, and Lounge is an aesthetic that draws a lot of inspiration from the late 50s to early 60s space age tiki bar aesthetic that one would see in Las Vegas around the time, and the visuals often draw an inspiration from rockabilly culture, the 60s tiki bar scene, casino sights and sounds, 60s bowling alleys, and just an overall playful and fun atmosphere with a bit of an edge and a dash of sleaze to it. Alright, next up we have Solar Punk, and this is a genre of speculative of fiction that is also its own and distinguished aesthetic, focusing mainly on renewable energy, living in harmony with nature, and the better future envisioned through both. Solar Punk emphasizes handcrafted wares and community. The punk in Solar Punk comes from the genre's anti-authoritarian and the anti-capitalist nature, as well as its strong focus on community and prefigurative politics, which separates it from aesthetics like cyber prep. Alright, next up we have Lunar Punk, and Lunar Punk is a more tentative, lesser defined aesthetic, and it is regarded as the sibling aesthetic of Solar Punk. It embraces spirituality and utopian futures, referencing witchcraft, futuristic design, nature, renewable energy, and the circle of life. These worlds focus on introverted details of oneself and or the environment setting rather than a greater community or singular world. One. All right, next up we got Vulture Culture, and Vulture Culture is a online subculture and form of hobbyist taxidermy based on the collection and preservation of animal remains. It takes its name from the practice of working with animals that have died of natural causes as opposed to hunting and trapping. Specimens are commonly acquired from roadkill or found in woodland areas, and practitioners called vultures may choose to preserve an entire animal, body parts, pelts, or bones. Several methods are used to enhance the appearance of pieces, including dyeing, crystallization, making jewelry from smaller bones and paws is popular, and just regular old taxidermy. Alright, next up we have Dolly K, and Dolly K is a Japanese fashion style that was influenced by European clothing and antique dolls. Later versions of the style integrate elements from fashion seen in fairy tales, Romani culture, and outfits worn by peasants in the Middle Ages. A singular outfit must have a vintage look to be considered Dolly K, and is characterized by dark appearance, layering, lace, embroidery, animal fur, as well as large accessories based around creepy fairy tales. Alright, next up we have Crowcore, and Crowcore 
primarily derives from goblin core and cottage core is an aesthetic that focuses mainly on nature, environmentalism, crows, and collecting usually shiny objects from nature in urban environments. Crow core is sometimes used as an alternative to goblin core, which has been criticized as anti-Semitic and shares the value of collecting small, lost, broken, thrown away, or trivial objects in nature visuals. All right, next up we have cyberdelic, and cyberdelic, now known as cyberdelia, is a term used to the immersion in cyberspace as a psychedelic experience. And the early cyberdelic visuals depict psychedelia in a more modern approach, using data mosh, glitch, kaleidoscopic patterns, and fractal art generated by AI. Alright, next up we have Nintendo Core, and not to be confused with the hardcore music genre, Nintendo Core is a broad aesthetic based around Nintendo related media. They can also be related to nostalgic and happy things, mostly seen paired with games from franchises like Super Mario, Legend of Zelda, Pokemon, Kirby, Animal Crossing, and Metroid. It's most commonly associated with retro games, especially ones from the NES to and Nintendo 64 eras, and things like pixel art and chiptune music are very common tropes. All right, next up we have Millenni Wave. And Millenni Wave is an aesthetic born from an overall sense of millennial frustration and existential dread with the direction society is going in by trying to put a happy face and a bright, colorful facade over it that does a piss poor job of actually hiding it. All right, next up we have Clean Core. And this refers to an aesthetic based around clean objects or objects used to sanitize such as soaps, sponges, and bathtubs, as well as places that may seem to have been recently cleaned. It cynically embraces capitalist imagery, yet at the same time taps into its anxiety-stricken audience, becoming a particularly popular aesthetic to try and achieve during the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, next up we have Slutcore, and Slutcore is an aesthetic that combines the vibrant colors and independent femininity of Bubblegum Bitch with themes of explicit and unbashed sexuality, not usually seen in Bubblegum Bitch. Slutcore is often based around the ideals of a typical, quote, slut who has sex with anyone they want, particularly, quote, female sluts, but it does not aim to shame women or their sexual expression and instead aims to celebrate it. The terms slut, whore, and bimbo are all reclaimed under this aesthetic by all the people who take it on as a good thing, and slutcore is not gender specific as men and non-binary people can have similar aesthetics that are sex positive. All right, next up we have Maidcore, and Maidcore, also called Maid, is an aesthetic based around maid outfits and media related to maids. The aesthetic is mostly based around the common outfits and activities of a maid, but does not change depending on the type of person who has the aesthetic, i.e. some maid aesthetics are more sexual while others are more proper. The aesthetic is commonly seen in certain anime, as well as themed restaurants popular in Japan and other eastern metropolitan areas. All right, next up we have Cloudcore, and Cloudcore is just pretty clouds, man. Man, clouds, they're beautiful. Just look up in the sky or out the window. I don't know. Alright, next up we have Rococo Punk, and Rococo was a style of fine art and design that was developed in Paris during the first half of the 18th century, and it began as a reaction against the Baroque grandeur of Louis XIV's court palace of Versailles. The goal of Rococo Punk is literally just to blend a Rococo style with a punk style, and all of the outfits worn in Rococo Punk were handmade by the people wearing them, and the goal is to, of course, capture a punk attitude. Alright, next up we have Dragon Core, and Dragon Core is an aesthetic that rose to relevance together with more mythical and nature related aesthetics during the 2010s. It is seen similar to Goblin Core and Crow Core in that they are all associated with appreciating and collecting things of importance. The difference lies primarily in the types of things collected. Goblins collect less appreciated aspects of nature and crows collect things that catch the eye while dragons collect quote worthy treasures. These can be coins, precious stones, and expensive jewelry, but they can also be things of symbolic or personal sentimental value. All right, next up we have Royal Core, and Royal Core is a term referring to a group of aesthetics based on the visuals associated with Western European royalty, ranging from Arthurian times, 5th and 6th centuries, to the Belle Epoque period, the late 19th century. Royal Core revolves around the refinement and classic Western standards of behavior, including intelligence, morality, skill, and elegance, being base qualities that give more meaning to the look. And visually, this aesthetic focuses on castle structure and the surrounding grounds, including night training areas and gardens. All right, moving on to tier six. Yeah, let's go guys, let's go. If you're still watching right now, I hope you're enjoying, I don't know. Yeah, comment if you made it this far. I don't, I don't know what, should we have like a secret thing or whatever? Comment, I think clouds are pretty if you made it this far. 
All right, first off, we have Changeling Core, and Changeling Core is an aesthetic that borrows ideas from Goblin Core, holding the same idea of mischief as well as loving the parts of nature that are shunned by others. The aesthetic also holds onto a degree of melancholy, tying back into its original creation for and by the neurodivergent community and the stigma slash misunderstanding that often comes with it. All right, next up, we have Heat Wave, and Heat Wave is an umbrella term for aesthetics related to all things physically hot especially glowing things. This can range from fire to exposed metal on a sunny day to anything that could get hot through natural occurrence like lava. Just everything hot. All right, next up we have black hole memes and black hole memes are images of memes edited until nothing is legible or meaningful. You take an image and literally visually destroy it. <laughs> and unlike nuked memes, they do not rely on artifacting and emoji usage, but on distortion and effects that reshape the image as a whole. All right, next up we have Nazi Chick, and Nazi Chick is an aesthetic centered around the use of Nazi era style imagery and paraphernalia in clothing and popular culture, especially when used for taboo breaking or shock value rather than out of genuine sympathies with Nazism or Nazi ideology. Although it can be used as a tool to critique elements of contemporary society by drawing illusions to the Nazi party and their laundry lists of evils they committed, there are people that are actual, you know, Nazis that participate within this aesthetic. Alright, next up we have Bastard Core, and Bastard Core is supposed to strike your fight or flight response and consist of friendly images along with shock humor themed captions or images that seem out of place and are uncomfortable to look at. The visuals are designed to be shocking, mildly offensive by nature, and quote, cursed by nature, all in an attempt to make people feel as uncomfortable as humanly possible. Alright, next up we have Sizz, and Sizz is a relatively new aesthetic that focuses on noise, distortion, and other artifacts as a way to modify the subject of an image and make it more abstract. It is not defined by a set of specific rules, but by an ethos. Composition is valued over technique, experimentation over purity, and feeling over formula. The community around this aesthetic is centered primarily around appreciating artists that create such works, so giving credit is mandatory. All right, next up we have Scrapper, and Scrapper is an aesthetic revolving around physical combat, mainly hand to hand. The word Scrapper is defined as meaning fighter, quarreler, and fierce competitor. And yeah, all right, next up we have Drug Core, and Drug Core is an aesthetic centered completely around the underground realm of drug usage and what some people will do to chase that specific high. This particular aesthetic can face some backlash due to its seemingly glorification of abusing dangerous substances by getting high by any means necessary, but it's not usually meant for the general populace to come across as it's mostly for addicts to share with other addicts. Drug core visuals will usually include romanticization of getting high, using popular mean fodder and tie it into drug usage, or images of administering drugs in unorthodox ways. Sometimes these drug core visuals can cross over into the territory of trauma core when drugs are used as a coping mechanism for past trauma, which can also add another level of darkness to the already dark world of drug core. Alright, next up we have zombie core, and zombie core or zombie apocalypse is a common marker genre in the horror, action, and thrill genres, and it centers around a person or a group of people trying to survive in a situation wherein civilization collapses due to its hordes of zombies, which are infectious creatures of undead who consume humans. The genre has also inspired a brand of aesthetics in which people roleplay as zombies or pretend the zombie apocalypse is real, and this aesthetic can also be tied into conspiracy theories about zombies and zombie movies. Alright, next up we have Vacation Dad Core, and Vacation Dad Core is a style and lifestyle aesthetic that is based on the timelessness of Hawaiian prints, well-worn sandals, comfortable hats, and chill vacations. It is the easygoing and practical fashion choices of dads on vacation who prioritize laid-back comfort over flashy appearances. From polos to button-downs, vests to cargo shorts, anything goes in Vacation Dad Core, as it's only truly Vacation Dad Core if you don't really care what you're wearing and just want to get a tan. Alright, next up we have Unicorn Core, and Unicorn Core is an aesthetic based on unicorns. This aesthetic gives off colorful and playful vibes similar to Kid Core, and one of the most iconic things from this aesthetic was the viral Unicorn Frappuccino, which was available at Starbucks for a few days in 2017. The aesthetic usually incorporates finding unicorns, magic books, and myths about unicorns, and people who like this aesthetic tend to love quiet spaces, magical areas, nature, flowers, rainbow paths, and trees, and mostly visuals consist of sparkles, glitters, and anything relating to the average unicorn visual. Alright, next up we have Dolcore, and Dolcore is an aesthetic inspired by everything dull, 
dark and dismal and is best known for its stormy and gloomy elements. Dolcor's visuals are usually gloomy and depressing, but in some ways they can be comforting and or calming. Alright, next up we have Ice Punk, and Ice Punk, also called Ice Core, is an aesthetic revolving around frozen, snowed over, and icy places, which give an eerie and otherworldly feel. It's essentially the antithesis of Sea Punk and seems to have a bit of a rivalry with the micro genre, as it's been described as Sea Punk in an Ice Age. Alright, next up we have Sparkle Core, and Sparkle Core is an aesthetic based on sparkles, shiny objects, and comfort, with visuals involving glittery objects and things that suggest creativity and positivity, involving art, makeup, and DIY projects. People who fit this aesthetic are usually feminine, in some way positive and dependable to others, and also compassionate. Sparkle Core is described as bringing comfort and joy to people through fun and happy visuals and things associated with this aesthetic include glitter, stars, and strobe lighting over soothing pictures. Alright, next up we have Kaggle, and Kaggle refers to a subculture of women originating from the south of province or France who dress and behave as quote bimbos. It made its debut as a slightly offensive slang word in the early mid 2000s but quickly was reclaimed as a proper lifestyle by the Kaggles themselves. And it doesn't differ much from the usual 2000s bimbo fashion as hair is long, straightened in either natural color or dyed blonde tanned and yeah all right next up we have sacrocore and being a combination of sacrilege and hardcore sacrocore is partially an offshoot of trendercore and queercore with it focusing on reclaiming the notion that lgbtq identities are sinful as well as barring visual aesthetics from catholicism and combining them with queer aesthetics the main goal of sacrocore is for those negatively affected by christian religions to find peace with their queer identities or otherwise morally acceptable interests lifestyle or choices that that have been labeled as sinful or practices that one is disallowed from pursuing. All right, next up we have Selkie Core, and Selkie Core is an aesthetic based around Norse and Celtic marine life, both real and mythological, as well as their environment and the weather there. The nature aspect features rocky beaches, jagged shorelines, and the cold ocean itself set against a mysterious background of fog and mist. The setting is usually Ireland and Scotland, as well as Scandinavian countries like Norway, Sweden, and Finland. All right, next up we have Joyride, and Joyride is an aesthetic that invokes a feeling of comfort and calmness while in a moving vehicle, especially at night or when it's raining. This activity can act as a form of therapy for some people that suffer mental health issues such as depression and anxiety, and it might be weird, but riding in a car at night can temporarily help people forget about their life problems and stop overthinking about the issues that they're currently going through. Alright, moving on to tier 7. Yes, good job everyone. Good job. And all right, next up we got Christcore and Christian Hardcore, also called Christcore, is a musical genre with its own visual aesthetic, and it uses a theme of Christian religious imagery, accessories, or decorations in an alternative fashion. Any Christian imagery is involved with Christian Hardcore, but it has a darker hue that is added over top, and this is done carefully as to avoid blasphemy. All right, next up we have Trenchcore, and this is an aesthetic inspired by a romanticized version of early modern and industrial warfare, predominantly World War I. It is centered on ideas of strong bonds with your friends and standing up for causes that you believe in. Common themes associated with it are loyalty, long distance relationships, and vintage clothing. And some visuals include trenches, military uniforms, horses, weaponry, and aerial warfare. All right, next up we got Havencore, and Havencore is basically like a place where you get feeling of comfort. It's also called cozy childhood hideaway and these spaces are more oriented towards children that can be used as refuge in a hiding place whether to escape danger or to those who simply want to be alone. Alright next up we have stone punk and stone punk refers to works set roughly during the stone age in which the characterize utilize Neolithic Revolution era technology constructed from materials more or less consistent with the time period, but possessing anachronistic complexity and function. Alright, next up we have Void Punk, and Void Punk is a punk subculture that is centered around the idea of reclaiming dehumanization or demonization faced as a marginalized minority, whether directly or indirectly. It focuses on embracing what society says isn't human enough, which leads to Void Punks rejecting humanity due to how exclusive and narrow-minded it is. Alright, next up we have Hermaphroditus, and Hermaphroditus is an aesthetic based on the Greek god Hermaphroditus, and this aesthetic was made by a transgender woman with the 
the intention to romanticize both trans bodies and intersex bodies. All right, next up we have Technocore, and Technocore is an aesthetic based on the advancement of technology related to analog and digital technology alike. It focuses primarily on the contemporary advancement of the analog digital conversion with an underground or industrial background taking place in real life and spanning primarily from 1970 to 2012. Our next up we have Dark Error Core, and Dark Error Core is an aesthetic which revolves around feelings of being lost and corrupted by an inhuman force. The main emotional idea of it is the theme of corruption and loss of oneself, and the physical elements tied to being warped and corrupted under a force one cannot control. It uses colors like black, red, and gray, and sometimes white, and sometimes the drawings in the backgrounds are simple or one color, and common patterns are swirls and or lines. Our next up we have Reef Wave, and this is essentially a different way of viewing nautical. And instead of focusing on what the ocean is like from land, it's collecting shells and walking on the beach. Reef Wave focuses more on the ocean itself in particular, though not exclusively, and on the way that water and waves affect the way light falls on water. Yeah, that we're done with that first iceberg, and move, we're gonna be moving on to the second iceberg. And um, the way I was set up, I don't have like the tiers, so I'm not gonna be able to like tell you whenever we're moving on to tiers, cause like I had to go through this first and second iceberg and then take out everything that I already talked about. So I kind of just listed it out. But yeah, it's still gonna follow the same iceberg format. We're just gonna start from the top. The further we go on, the more obscure everything's gonna get. But uh. Yeah. All right. First off, we have horror, and this is a genre of speculative fiction that is intended to frighten, scare, disgust, or startle its readers by inducing feelings of horror and terror. It creates an eerie and frightening atmosphere, and horror is frequently supernatural, though it may be non-supernatural. And yeah, the entire point of this aesthetic is to frighten the audience. All right, next up we have stoner, and stoners are people who enjoy consuming the psychoactive drug cannabis. There are a vast range of aesthetics, art, and music that revolves around stoner culture, and they refer to the cannabis that they are using as like weed, kush, pot, bud, you know how it is. And stoners are somewhat similar to hippie culture, yet they mainly focus on using cannabis rather than other mind-altering drugs like psychedelics. All right, next up we have greasers, and greasers were a working class youth subculture that originated in the 1950s among teenagers in the northeastern and southern United States. And rock and roll music was a major part of the culture, and the styles were influenced by singers like Eddie Cochran, Gene Vincent, and Johnny Burnett. And the name Greaser came from their greased back hairstyle, which involved combing back hair using wax, hair gel, creams, tonics, or pomade. Alright, next up we have Nico, and Nico is an aesthetic related to the cat people trope in anime and manga, and it has become a staple in meme and stan culture, and the aesthetic is really popular among the kawaii gamer community, and cat girls are a staple in Aero Kawaii. And cat people are generally normal humans with cat ears and a tail. Alright, next up we have Pirate, and Pirate or Pirate Core is an aesthetic based around the themes of pirates. It usually involves boats, the sea, and treasure rather than actual crime, and it draws its inspirations from aesthetics like Adventure Core and Crow Core, and may include things such as collecting shells, rocks, trinkets, bones, etc., studying maps and constellations, sea travel, and sketching. Alright, next up we have Victorian, and Victorian is a visual aesthetic that comprises the various fashions and trends in British culture that emerged and developed in the United Kingdom and the British Empire during the reign of Queen Victoria, which is known as the Victorian era from 1837 to 1901. The issue and aesthetics of social class often come into play with the Victorian aesthetic with both visual signs and fictional works discussing the differences between the poor, the working class, and the bourgeoisie, and the conflict between urbanism and a good quality of life is another common point of discussion, as the Industrial Revolution was at its highest peak during this time. Our next sub we have nuclear and nuclear is an aesthetic that is based around the themes of nuclear power nuclear weaponry machines and more it involves gas masks hazardous items hazmat suits and lands in ruins the aesthetic is usually historical specifically being based around the 1980s due to the large amount of nuclear power being built during the time as well as the ongoing cold war making nuclear warfare a constant fear. Alright, next up we have MLG, and MLG or Major League Gaming is a term that represents someone being very good, specifically in a certain video game. It originated from the esports organization of the same name, 
and used to be a way to refer to professional video game players and in the 2010s it was shortened to mlg and began to be associated with a genre of internet memes that were based around video games it usually is a video game based aesthetic and the videos feature compilations of various esports memes and flashing rainbows many people find comfort in it due to the nostalgia or the colorfulness of this aesthetic. All right, next up we have baby core, and baby core involves quote gentle muted colors, pastel or cute childlike innocence. And this aesthetic leans towards softer, more kawaii elements, and is distinguished from kid core through its usage of lighter colors and visuals typically reserved for babies and toddlers. All right, next up we have wizard core, and wizard core is an aesthetic based off of magic, fantasy, and the taste for discovery and exploration. It's similar to witch core, with the same theme of magic, just more central. It has its roots in folklore and mythology surrounding magicians and various cultures. For example, the mythical magician Merlin, as depicted in The Legend of King Arthur, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, and uh, yeah. All right, next up we have Cryptid Core, and Cryptid Core is an aesthetic traditionally associated with cryptozoology, or the study of creatures from urban legends and folklore, and the romanticization of the adventure and mystery surrounding conspiracy theories, ghost hunting, cryptid hunting, and the supernatural. Most fans of this aesthetic are a part of, or want to be a part of, a community that gets to solve something beyond themselves with their friends and witness something strange and fantastical. Alright, next up we have Ghost Core, and Ghost Core is an aesthetic revolving around ghosts, spirits, cemeteries, and the eerie feeling surrounding them. There are two different factions, one focuses on death and the philosophy behind the meaning of life, and the other faction takes on the macabre and depressing and makes light of it. People may often relate to ghosts and or wish to live as one, and the aesthetic is described as dark, haunted, and ethereal. Our right, next up we have Spirit Core, and Spirit Core is an aesthetic primarily based around the feeling of the supernatural or out of this world happenings at night. It is often associated with a feeling of loneliness, but this is not necessarily a bad thing. All right, next up we have Cabin Core, and this is an aesthetic that romanticizes the life of residing in a cabin. Similar to Cottage Core, Nature core and adventure core cabin core embraces the idea of getting away from bustling industrial life favoring places where days can be spent in a more remote setting all right next up we have camp core and camp core revolves around camping and camping activities such as hiking fishing and stargazing this aesthetic is closely related to cabin core and camp core more so focuses on connecting with nature and enjoying the forest or other natural landforms around you. Alright, next up we have Normcore, and in fashion, Normcore is a trend characterized by unpretentious, average-looking clothing. It also reflects the attitude of finding liberation in being nothing special. Alright, next up we have Rainy Day, and Rainy Day is based on rainy weather as well as stormy or foggy weather, and its associated feelings are feeling calm and relaxed. This aesthetic often appeals to introverted people and it is also known as the pluviophile aesthetic which means someone who loves or takes comfort in the rain. Alright next up we have bohemian and bohemian is a style of fashion drawing on various bohemian and hippie influences. Practitioners of this aesthetic wear loose colorful clothing and have been known as boho chick and hippie style with their long flowing hair and rich threadbare fabrics. Bohemians stand out in a crowd representing a colorful counterculture based on creativity. All right, next up we have Afrofuturism, and this is an aesthetic centered around an Afrocentric view of the future and buys into the philosophy that the future is black and tackles themes such as feminism, alienation from your people, water symbolism, and reclamation of one's identity through their roots. All right, next up we have Cripple Punk, and Cripple Punk, also known as C Punk or Crip Punk, is a movement that focuses on disability pride exclusively for physical disabilities. It involves accepting and loving oneself for, not despite of, disabilities, mobility aids, and the struggles that come with them. It also rejects the myth of disabled people as quote inspirational heroes simply because they have a disability and that they have to be perfectly nice and submissive to be respected by able-bodied people. Alright next up we have medical core and this is an aesthetic that involves paraphernalia and the appearance of all things medical related. The aesthetic does not aim to romanticize, fetishize, glorify illness or medical related trauma but aims to act as a coping mechanism for those in need of it. Visuals include needles and syringes, IV bags, hospitals, medicine, Red Cross, and pills. 
All right, next up we have Craftcore, and Craftcore is centered around handcrafted items. And the most popular Craftcore visual and activity is embroidery, but the aesthetic encompasses a variety of other crafts and activities and crafted items. Our right, next up we have Candy Gore and Candy Gore or Macute is an aesthetic coming from the word macabre which means disturbing and horrifying because of involvement with or depiction of death or injury and examples of the Macute aesthetic would be graphic imagery like blood, guts, and all sorts of gore but being depicted in a light cartoonish way. Our right, next up we have Cubism and Cubism is an early 20th century avant-garde art movement that revolutionized European painting and sculpture and inspired related movements in music, literature, and architecture. It has been considered the most influential art movement of the 20th century, and one primary influence that led to Cubism was the representation of three-dimensional form in the late works of Paul Cezanne. Our right, next up we have forest punk and forest punk is an aesthetic that is in the nature core family and is similar to cottage core in its high regard for nature and mutual support however forest punk is less restrictive of technology particularly solar powered items all right next up we have hallyu and hallyu also known as korea wave is an aesthetic centered around south korea popular culture and korean drama shows and it often centers on boy bands made up of kanminam or flower boys who are pretty androgynous young men whose style is catered to the female gaze. All right, next up we have Jersey Shore, and the Jersey Shore aesthetic first started rising in prominence around the mid to late 2000s and eventually fell out of style in the early 2010s and was centered around the stereotyped perception of Italian Americans from around the New York and New Jersey metropolitan area. Its meteoric rise in Nightmare Fall coincided with the smash hit MTV reality TV show Jersey Shore, and for the vast majority of people, the Jersey Shore aesthetic has retreated back to New York and the New Jersey area since when the actual TV show and Announced it was ending. All right, next up we have metrosexual, and this is a term often used to refer to a man that makes sure he looks good and tends to spend a lot of time and money doing so. The term was coined in 1994 and is typically used to refer to a man living in an urban post-industrial consumerist culture. All right, next up we have rivet head, and rivet head refers to people that are fans or performers of industrial music, which is influenced by electronic body music and industrial rock music. And uh, yeah. Our next up we have Sukeban. Sukeban is a Japanese fashion derived from the looks of Japanese girl gangs. As male gangs, also known as Yankee, originally didn't allow female members, the girls started a distinct identity of their own. They formed Sukeban gangs, which were a violent feminist movement that emerged in Japan in the late 1960s, and this whole aesthetic kind of emulates that. All right, next up we have 1950s suburbia and 50s suburbia describes the culture of american middle class in the 1950s as due to the population boom following world war ii new neighborhoods were built in the areas surrounding large cities and these communities were known as suburbs thus the term suburbia and the ideal suburban neighborhood was a friendly community where everyone looked and thought exactly the same way and everyone was happy and this image was reflected in advertising books and television shows all right, next up we have pastel goth and this is a result of mixing goth and grunge with the sweet pastel elements of the kawaii aesthetic but also a touch of bohemian chick and pastel goth first emerged in early 2010 and also spread in popularity to japan for a brief period all right next up we have corporate and corporate is an aesthetic that relates to business attire that refers to the clothing that employees wear to work depending on the workplace various levels of the formality of business attire are expected and the norm and the dress codes range from traditional and formal to smart casual business casual and casual all right next up we have cult core and cult core is an aesthetic centered around themes of cults it often involves imagery and hints towards idealization religious symbols mind control and god complexes from a media standpoint cult core media is based on stories real or false of people following false unrealistic leaders and ideals and the longing for, for purity but being corrupted our right, next up we have Yonki, and Yonki is an aesthetic that consists of young men and women who dye their hair blonde or orange, wear trashy clothes, and smoke and drink before they're out of high school. They are famous for being loud, rude, and refusing to take part in strict manners of Japanese society. The Yonki subculture lasted a long time in Japan as it originated in the 50s, gained its name in the 70s, and then flourished with popularity throughout the 80s and 90s. And people stopped adopting the aesthetic in real life after the 2000s, but it still remains popular in anime and manga to this day. All right, next up we have Zazu and Zazus were a subculture in France during World War II and there were young people expressing their individuality by wearing 
big or garish clothing and dancing wildly to swing jazz. All right, next up we have Wonderland, and this is an aesthetic based on the feeling of being lost and far away from home, but being okay with it. The aesthetic is heavily based on the Alice in Wonderland stories and visuals, and Wonderland images and visuals usually consist of a darker setting. The images invoke a feeling of being lost or away from home, and on the contrary, many Wonderland images also contain crazy patterns, bright visuals, and sometimes psychedelic imagery. All right, next up we have Petcore. Petcore is an aesthetic that's focused on pets, mostly dogs and cats, but also including rats, hamsters, horses, rabbits, birds, and fish. This aesthetic can be focused on nostalgia, but not inherently, and imagery in Petcore is usually more playful. All right, next up we have Soviet Brutalism, and Soviet Brutalism is the architectural, visual, and cultural style that was prevalent in the Soviet Union and its sphere of influence during the 20th century. One of the most distinctive elements of this aesthetic is the blocky geometric architecture that can be found in the cities and towns throughout the region, and Soviet-style architecture was particularly prevalent in governmental buildings, which were often designed in a futuristic Stalinist style with grandiose facades and elaborate ornamentation meant to symbolize the power and authority of the Soviet state. All right, next up we have Thriftcore, and Thriftcore is an aesthetic with the theme revolving around clothing, toys, furniture, and thrift shops and garage sales. People who are involved in this aesthetic have thrift halls where they purchase goods from thrift stores, and yeah, visuals put a strong emphasis on vintage and retro goods that can be bought at thrift stores. All right, next up we have Chaotic Academia, and Chaotic Academia is an aesthetic that involves haphazard routines, messy habits, unusual banned literature, and studying with a passion. It's a subtype of academia that promotes the acceptance of messy or seemingly uncomposed traits that some students may have. All right, next up we have Cherry Emoji Twitter, and Cherry Emoji Twitter, also called Ho Twitter, Cherry Babe, or CET, is a fashion aesthetic that centers around being attractive and erotic, but also being very mischievous and bad while doing so. This aesthetic is a movement of sexual liberation for women without the corporate meddling involved in similar aesthetic femme fatale. Alright, next up we have Dual Kawaii, and Dual Kawaii mainly revolves around the feeling of being lost or trapped in the world, feeling tired and dull constantly, and a general sense of hopelessness, being dissatisfied with how the world works, and wanting to feel apathy because too many thoughts and feelings have occurred. There is, however, a more optimistic side that combines self-care, sensitivity, and charm into one aesthetic and this aesthetic itself is both pessimistic and optimistic. All right, next up we have Health Goth, and Health Goth is an aesthetic revolving around biotechnology, monochrome sportswear, fetish culture, extreme cleanliness, and rendered environments. They have roots in street goth, but focus on transhumanism, technical sportswear, bionic body parts, and combat gear. Alright, next up we have Sandal Punk, and Sandal Punk, also known as Bronze Punk, is a subgenre of cyberpunk that is set in an alternate universe in which civilizations during the ancient era have access to advanced fantastic Bronze Age or Iron Age technology, which would potentially lead them to a less isolated retro-futurist Greece that was never conquered, or a retro-futurist Roman Empire that never fell. Alright, next up we have Steelpunk, and Steelpunk is a subgenre of punk that focuses on the technologies that had their heyday in the late 20th century, and is characterized as being about hardware, not software, and the real world and not the virtual one. Alright, next up we have Salvage Punk, and Salvage Punk is an aesthetic with a stylized setting that focuses on technology and culture based on an unusual source scavenge junk. Weapons, tools, clothing, and sometimes entire cities would be built out of repurposed and recycled material. And a key factor here is that said materials, often pieces of trash, are being used for something other than their original purpose. All right, next up we have Plague Core, and this takes inspiration from Renaissance and Baroque era plague doctors, and the aesthetic revolves around curiosity and discovery. The aesthetic's visuals include colors like black and grays, as well as bird masks and cloaks. All right, next up we have Hate Core, and Hate Core, also known as Nazi Punk or NS Punk, describes a subgenre of hardcore punk music that promotes hate racism, and extremist ideologies. It is characterized by its aggressive and offensive lyrics, often including themes of ethnic supremacy, nationalism, and violence. All right, next up we have American Pioneers, and this refers to the settlers that colonized the western portion of what is now known as the United States of America in the 19th century. Pioneers were motivated by Manifest Destiny, a concept within American culture that claims that God ordered the American people to make the nation occupied from the Atlantic to the Pacific, and uh, yeah, the visual 
visual tropes associated with pioneer life are distinctive and familiar to Americans as they are inspired by the travel equipment and landscape along the routes west. Alright, next up we have soft apocalypse, and soft apocalypse is the concept of society collapsing slowly, usually characterized by the decline of technology and abandoned cities full of wildlife. The surviving humans would be focused on food, shelter, and having to work together as a community rather than fighting or having to deal with whichever world ending event may be occurring. Alright, next up we have bloom core, and bloom core, also known as flower core, is an aesthetic based on the theme of flowers, gardening, and nature. Bloom core differs from nature core in its focus on village greenery, emphasis of flowers, and themes of a quiet lifestyle. Alright, next up we have rat core, and rat core is an aesthetic about memes and cute photos of rats. Many photos of this aesthetic are people's pet rats or edited stock photos and, and rat core tends to have a creepy cute aspect to it and this is especially prominent when visuals have soft colors cute imagery glitter etc as throughout history rats have been associated with disease filth and death and this is kind of like a juxtaposition to that all right next up we have cuddle party and cuddle party is an aesthetic centered around positive feelings and a youthful nostalgic vibe without delving as much into some of the childish elements of kid core all right next up we're going to be talking about make bling and make bling is an aesthetic that was made popular from roughly 2000 to 2008 overlapping with y2k your bling and surf crush aesthetics it is often loose referred to as y2k fashion trashy y2k or simply y2k despite its differences from the actual y2k aesthetic all right next up we have wanderlust and wanderlust is an aesthetic centered around a strong desire to wander or travel and explore the world this applies to many location-based aesthetics around the world and can include fantasy worlds as well our right, next up we have pale and soft grunge or pale grunge is an aesthetic based on simple photos with a color palette consisting of white gray black green and blue all right next up we have kinder horror and kinder horror was a clothing style worn by a handful of mostly female grunge bands in the u.s during the early to mid 1990s all right next up we have dino core and this is literally just like cute little dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next up we have constructivism, and constructivism is an art movement or style in which assorted mechanical objects are combined into abstract, mobile, structural forms. Originated in Russia in the 1920s, and has influenced many aspects of modern architecture and design. Alright, next up we have coffin wood, and this is an aesthetic meant to be a direct response to cottage core and to go against the aesthetics dominant among the younger millennial and Gen Z populace. Coffin wood is rural and rustic, but it is darker, more massive masculine and melancholic in its character. Alright, next up we have Nightcore, and Nightcore is a royal core sub-aesthetic inspired by medieval knights. Yeah, it's, yeah, knights, man. Alright, next up we have Draco Punk, and Draco Punk or Dragon Punk is a subgenre of punk that is centered around dragons and other mythical beings. It has a medieval setting, having the cities built from dragon bones and people having dragons for pets. Alright, next up we have Dungeon Synth, and Dungeon Synth is a subgenre of dark ambient music that emerged in the late 1980s and early 1990s. The genre employs aesthetics and themes typically associated with black metal and applies it to dreamier ambient songs. Alright, next up we have Honeycore. And Honeycore is centered around the rural production and consumption of goods such as honey, bread, and waffles. It is similar to Cottagecore in that agricultural imagery and values being emphasized, but the visuals are streamlined to create a color palette of mostly pale yellows and browns and a heavy focus on honey, bees, anything related to all that. Alright, next up we have Weathercore, and Weathercore is an aesthetic based around the 80s and 90s weather channel, broadcasts along with other retro news and broadcasting stations at the time, all that old stuff, you know how it is. Alright, next up we have Junglecore, and Junglecore is an aesthetic relating to the vibrant and mysterious ways of the jungle, which is usually filled with thriving habitats for native animals, plants, waterfalls, and other jungle sightings. Alright, next up we have Mushroom Core, and Mushroom Core is the aesthetic of mushrooms. And yeah, these people love mushrooms, dude. Alright, next up we have Moss Core, and Moss Core or Mossy is an aesthetic that focuses on forest and moss related things and objects. The main focus is dark, mossy forests, and sometimes things like fungi and liverworts are prevalent. And there are also man made objects included in the aesthetic, like shacks huts and cabins all right next up we have gloom core and gloom core is an aesthetic inspired by the tranquil forests and foggy beaches of the pacific northwest and obscure hobbies and interests the aim is to appreciate the quiet through dim surroundings and those who take a liking to this genre tend to find beauty in cloudy skies foggy coastlines and tall endless green forests 
All right, next up we have Grand Millennial. And ranging in age from mid 20s to late 30s, Grand Millennials have an affinity for design trends considered by mainstream culture to be stuffy or outdated. Their taste for the antiquated isn't ironic, it's more supposed to be timeless. And uh, yeah. Our next up we have grandparent core and this is an aesthetic related to the common aesthetic depiction of grandparents as a whole it is a comfortable whimsical aesthetic centered around focusing on things we enjoy the most grandparent core implies a certain level of expert knowledge in various topics or activities and most of the things that are involved with grandparent core are old vintage or antique all right, next up we have tween core and tween core is an aesthetic that shares some similarities with kid core maintaining the nostalgic and childish themes but also embodying teen spirit often associated with the high school dream aesthetic and there is an emphasis on disney sitcoms like hannah montana and the disney princess lineup as well all right next up we have ranger core and the ranger core aesthetic is based on the fantasy rangers that you'll see in like rangers apprentice tolkien books and dungeons and dragons it's centered around survival in the natural world and self-sufficiency with a focus on adventure all right next up we have warm core and warm core is an aesthetic that is related to cottage core and other nature slash farm related aesthetics and the aesthetic is related to things that make a person feel warm and fuzzy inside with a hint of nostalgia all right next up we have prairie core and prairie or prairie core is based off of the life of american pioneers and life on the prairie though it is not inspired by the u.s prairie and is not limited to the united states like the american pioneers this aesthetic finds power and freedom and experimenting with new things by using the old as inspiration its fashion has both traditional and modern variant and key things include grassland cattle flowers wheat and pioneer related works our right, next up we have memphis design and memphis design is an aesthetic that was prevalent in popular culture roughly from 1984 to 1997 it involves bright neon colors pure geometric shapes and zigzagged squiggly lines it was created in the 1980s by the italian memphis group and the memphis era was also the main inspirations for vaporwave synthwave and future funk our right, next up we have techwear and techwear is a fashion style that combines functionality with style and the appropriate aesthetics pockets lockers clasps and straps as well as other useful accessories are featured in the style of clothing which uses special materials appropriate design and properties that ensure breathability freedom of movement water resistance and comfort all right next up we have virgo's tears and virgo's tears is an aesthetic formed around the small frail flower and the grand infinite cosmos and the natural beauty between their distinct difference the art also has a philosophical tone along with the feeling of understanding and appreciation of togetherness to change and grow and to live a life full of your own beauty inside and out all right next up we have rusticore and rusticore or rustic is an aesthetic based about rustic themes or farms and is generally a romanticized version of rural living all right next up we have fanfare and fanfare is an aesthetic surrounding circuses and carnivals and temporary events that involve spectacle fun and excitement various rides and attractions and interesting sometimes mysterious people that operate at the circus or carnival all right next up we have cyber minimalism and cyber minimalism or flat design is an aesthetic that has been prevalent since 2013 and is characterized by sleek smooth minimalist and organized technological design and function all right next up we have pixelscape and pixelscape is an aesthetic centered around mostly isometric pixel art the pixel art is very elaborate and the same style was sometimes used in web design all right next up we have Bosazuku, and this is the name of a Japanese subculture consisting out of biker gangs that centered around over the top customized motorcycles. And it first emerged during the 1950s as a part of the Yankee subculture, but has since moved on as its own custom bike culture. Alright, next up we have Villain Core, and Villain Core is an aesthetic which encompasses being yourself and doing everything in your power to get what you want by any means necessary. This, for example, might be becoming rich or famous or getting revenge on someone who wronged you. All right, next up we got Schizo Wave and Schizo Wave or Hyperborean is an aesthetic that is associated with paranoid delusions and hallucinations. And some fans of this aesthetic commonly associated with pre-Soviet conspiracy theories and an attempt to link the disorder to said era as an explanation for the name. 
All right, next up we have Stripcore, and Stripcore is an aesthetic inspired by a romanticized vision of strip clubs and other such establishments. It is based around the idea of strip clubs and glow-in-the-dark undergarments, and the aesthetic glorifies the neon signage and back alley advertisements, as well as glamorous interiors of these sorts of establishments. All right, next up we have Heightcore, and Heightcore is a way of dressing that emphasizes utilitarian garments that impact comfort, waterproofing, and windproofing, such as gear that people would wear on a long walk. All right, next up we have Kids Science, and Kids Science is the aesthetic surrounding educational efforts to make science appealing to children through presenting the field as fun, with kooky characters, bright colors, highly stylized images, and doable experiments. All right, next up we have Tech Emo, and Tech Emo or Technical Scene is usually classified by a mix of usual dark goth and emo culture and modern or past technology and machinery, such as motherboards or typewriters, and the origins of this aesthetic are currently unknown. All right, next up we have Gadget Punk, and this is an aesthetic relating to the use of gadgets, gizmos, and inventions that are grounded in pseudoscience and fiction. It includes visuals of exposed wires, circuit boards, glowing parts, gears, and mechanical assemblies, and Gadget Punk can overlap with aspects of science academia, steampunk, and salvage punk. All right, next up we have Frutiger Aero, and this is a broad design style and aesthetic that was prevalent in advertising, media, stock imagery, and technology from roughly 2004 to 2013 following the end of the Y2K era. Overlapping with McBling and electropop aesthetics, it is characterized by its use of glossy textures, cloudy skies, tropical fish, water, bubbles, glass, lens flare, and all that, you know, all that type of stuff. All right, next up we have Hydrogen, and Hydrogen is an aesthetic designed to evoke a vibe of a combination of calmness, a feeling of being static or frozen in time, and enough strangeness to feel slightly surreal. All right, next up we have Nanopunk, and Nanopunk is an aesthetic that is heavily inspired by biopunk and cyberpunk, and focuses on the impacts of nanotechnology. Nanopunk looks at the relationship between humans and nanotechnology, and how the government could control humans using this type of tech. All right, next up we have Trashcore, and Trashcore is an aesthetic based around decaying, abandoned buildings, and general garbage. Anything old, poorly made, broken, or just generally gross and probably not safe to be around could probably qualify as Trashcore. Our right, next up we have Abstract Tech, and Abstract Tech consists of design motifs such as concentric arcs, hexagons, or circuit patterns that are intended to represent the abstract concept of, quote, technology or evoke a sense of something being futuristic or technologically advanced. Alright, next up we have Hexatron, and Hexatron is a vague sci-fi aesthetic that was prominent throughout the 2010s and is characterized by hexagons, neon blue, holograms, and futuristic technology. Alright, next up we have Grazing the Core, and Grazing the Core is a meme aesthetic originating from Poland, and the aesthetic parodies the stereotype of a Facebook mom or old women who send kissy celebration gifts to their families online, as well as old GIF graphics, particularly from GIF editors like Picmix or Blingy. Alright, next up we have Cargo Punk, and Cargo Punk is a micro genre of music and aesthetics, and it focuses on industrial architecture such as docks, loading bays, and transport vanes. Alright, next up we have Roller Wave, and Roller Wave is an aesthetic which does for the 70s what Outrun does for the 80s and Vaporwave does for the 90s. It is a reference to the 1975 James Cannes film Rollerball, and like the film, it, the aesthetic often delves into 1970s retrofuturism. However, Roller Wave only deals with the 70s and has a far less Jetson-y feel. Alright, next up we have Highscore, and Highscore is associated with heists and thieves, data, money, art, jewels, and historical documents, and Highscore aesthetics can be found in espionage, crime, and detective media. Alright, next up we have Concore, and Concore is an aesthetic associated with thieves, con men, grifters, lifters, and scammers, and Concore aesthetics frequently appear in espionage, crime, and detective media. Alright, next up we have Cartel Core, and Cartel Core is an aesthetic originating from the fashion of 1980s drug cartels, notably Pablo Escobar's Medellin Cartel. The aesthetic focuses on Miami, Florida, USA, and Central and South America, and incorporates elements of 1980s fashion and imagery, with big inspirations for Cartel Core including Narcos, Scarface, Narcos footage, Miami Vice, you know, all that type of stuff. Alright, next up we have Mommy's on the Phone Core, and Mommy's on the Phone Core refers to an aesthetic based around waiting for your mother to stop chatting on her phone or in different crowded spaces such as malls, parks, and diners, as well as spaces that may seem popular while your mom is on the phone. Alright, next up we have incels, and incels 
short for involuntary. Celibates are members of an online subculture who define themselves as unable to find a romantic or sexual partner despite desiring one, and live in a state they call incel dom. Many incels will blame a variety of issues on why they became incels, be it physical or societal. There is also the fact that a good percentage of incels are mentally unstable in this depression or other mental disorders, which oftentimes makes them feel unable to talk to women, deprive them of sex because of their quote, disability. Alright, next up we have Nice Guy, and Nice Guy is an aesthetic and internet subculture that revolves around being or making fun of an adult male who portrays themselves with the characteristics of being agreeable, gentle, compassionate, sensitive, and vulnerable, and thus believes he deserves all women and tends to be a creep. The term is used both positively to refer to real nice men and negatively to refer to creeps and predators who pretend to be nice. Alright, next up we have Web Creep, and this is an aesthetic based around a mixture of multiple different aesthetics, but it is inspired primarily through mysteries, true crime stories, creepypastas, and any horror or scary content originating on the internet. For better context, imagine looking through the r slash no sleep subreddit on a dark rainy night or going on a deep dive on an urban legend or serial killer in your hometown. It takes adventure and monster hunting and applies it to web surfing and rabbit holes. Alright, next up we have Karen Core, and Karen Core is a joke aesthetic that involves memes and parody cosplay of Karens, which is a term for a white middle-aged blonde woman who quote makes mountains out of molehills. For example, rudely asking to see a manager after an employee messed up a child's meal at a restaurant or something like that and they act irrationally when something is not going their way all right next up we have intel core and intel core is an aesthetic for those who deliver a remarkable performance at unreasonable prices yeah that's it we're done 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 i'm gonna call this every aesthetic explained because we just talked about so many yeah i'm still expecting people to like drop comments like with the music genres and be like oh you missed this 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 and this and that's right i'm expecting it <laughs> uh, this is what i want this time <laughs> i don't know but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you're doing okay and uh yeah i love you bro i'll catch you in the next one